Paris in the fall, the last months of the year and the end of the millennium. The city holds many memories for me, of cafes, of music, of love, and of death. As I picked myself up, all I could hear was the ceaseless drone of traffic. Life went on around me, but the explosion was to change my life forever. The umbrella had protected me from the bomb blast, but it was of no use to me now. Wrapped around the lamppost was a newspaper. The leading article referred to the visit of a Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. That was the only news story. The rest was rumor, gossip, and sensationalism. Then I noticed the writing at the foot of the page. It read Salah ed Din, 1345. I contemplated crawling under the umbrella and pretending none of this had ever happened. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. It was the body of the old man. It was hard to believe I'd seen him alive only minutes before. I tried not to meet his stare as I searched the dead man's pockets. No wallet, no papers, no credit cards. The guy's past was a blank page. I checked his pockets, nothing. A, mis a mysteriously undamaged bottle of spirit stood on the bar. The pretty young waitress was unconscious.
Oh, my head. Never again. How much vodka did I drink? Oh, no, don't tell me. What is your name, Sherry? George Stobart, ma'am. Oh, American. She asked the question quite innocently, but I could sense her reserve. It was something which seemed to afflict all Europeans. You look like you could use a little help. I could use a little drink. I feel sick, dizzy, and bruised. I don't even remember the party. Just relax and take it easy. You've been knocked out. You don't say. What happened? There's been an explosion. You should try not to move. Are you a doctor? No, but I used to play hospitals when I was a kid. Can you remember anything at all? No. I need a drink. Pour me a brandy. You could be in shock. No alcohol. What about the old man? Is he dead? Yes, he is. Oh, mon dieu. The pretty young waitress was unconscious. She didn't respond. If I wanted another cappuccino, I'd have to serve myself. Hey, wake up. It was an iron cover concealing the entrance to a drain or sewer. I tried to lift the cover with my fingers but couldn't gain any leverage. smelled like someone had dumped a truckload of fish in a locker room on a hot summer afternoon. I'd had it with sticking my nose into French trash cans. There was nothing of interest. The window was protected by stout-looking iron bars. The drain pipe looked as if it would bear my weight. I took a deep breath and prepared to climb the drain pipe. I guess the clown hadn't escaped over the rooftops. Right there. Oh, don't shoot. I'm innocent. I'm an American. Can't make up your mind, huh? I demand to see the American consul. Drop your weapons and get down on the ground. Put that thing away, Sergeant Moo. I apologize, monsieur, but I cannot permit you to leave. Am I under arrest? Ah, uh, no. I would simply like to ask you some questions. En avant, to the cafe, march. What a mess. This bombing is an outrage, is it not? Stop that, monsieur. Stop holding your breath at once. Has it occurred to you that he may be dead, Moo? Oui, monsieur, but I prefer to look on the bright side. Besides, I recall a case where the killer escaped by feigning death. 
However, in this case, the man is quite dead. Clearly, the killer knew of his presence and... How many times have I warned you about premature extrapolation? All we know is that he is dead. It seemed reasonable to assume... A great detective assumes nothing. Take Maigret, for instance. But, but he was a fictitious character, monsieur. Why, he was no more real than Poirot or Tintin. That's different, Moo. They were comedy Belgians. Anyway, it is unlikely that even you will learn much from talking to the dead. Examine the girl and take her statement, if you can. Et maintenant, to business. Your name, please? George Stobart. I'm from California. And what brings you to Paris, Monsieur Stobart? Travel. I'm touring Europe. You chose well. The city is most beautiful at this time of year, no? Uh, yeah. I guess so, apart from the bomb blasts. Were you in the vicinity of the cafe at the time of the explosion? Yeah, I was sitting out on the sidewalk. I was lucky I wasn't killed. The inspector passed over my remark with no reaction. Did you see the deceased enter the cafe? Yes, I did. Was he alone? Uh, yeah. And did he say anything to you? No. He was more interested in the waitress. Did you see anyone else in the cafe? Yeah, there was a guy dressed as a clown. He was carrying an accordion. An accordion? Bon, the picture is forming in my mind, and it is not a pretty one. Is the girl all right, Moo? She'll leave. She confirms the American statement. A clown with an accordion, no doubt an elaborate and eccentric disguise. Very well. Eh bien, I have heard enough. What do you mean? I am satisfied that you know nothing. You may leave. I hope this little incident does not spoil the rest of your vacation. What about my personal safety? Can't you at least give me some advice? What can I say? Stay alert and look out for suspicious characters. And don't cross the road until the little man shows green. Great advice. I honestly believe you are in no danger, monsieur. Should you remember anything of importance, please contact me. My card. Thanks. That is all. You may go. There's not much to go on, monsieur. On the surface, no. But what lurks inside the subconscious? If the door can only be opened. Are you serious, monsieur? I thought your interest in psychic detection was purely academic. Academic? You are about to witness a scientific breakthrough. I examined the jagged glass remaining in the window. It was broken, all right. The sergeant was a scrawny man in his 50s who resembled a constipated chicken. Excuse me, sergeant. You are the inspector. Go on, monsieur. Look, sergeant, the inspector gave me his card. Yes, monsieur. He wants you to advise him if you have any information concerning this case. Well, I'd be glad to talk with him. But I don't want him working his psycho weirdness on me. Ah, no, monsieur. You are confusing the science of parapsychology with witchcraft. Oh, yeah? What's the difference? We don't do sacrifices. Did you find the victim's briefcase yet? No, sir. The inspector gave me specific instructions to guard this door. 
Until E countermands these orders or backup arrives, here I stay. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kinda... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No, he just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go on and try to forget. I really did see the clown. He ran into the alley across the street. Did you follow him? I lost him. I figure he went underground. Do you know how many kilometers of sewers there are beneath this great city? It's not a question I've lost sleep over. I have no doubt that Inspector Rousseau will organize a proper search. How did you and Rosso arrive at the scene of the explosion so quickly? You arrived within minutes. Was it a tip-off? Inspector Rosso's sources are a perpetual mystery to me, monsieur. There are some who say he has made a pact with the devil. And what do you think? I think he is the devil. What is Rosso doing with that girl? He is giving her the once-over, as you Americans say. Huh? Once he gets his teeth into a case, nothing will shake him off. Was he serious about all that psycho detective stuff? Of course. Inspector Rousseau is a pioneer and a visionary. His revolutionary methods, once perfected, may change the face of law enforcement forever. I can't see it taking off in L.A. I've got Inspector Rousseau's address card. Yes, monsieur. You showed me before. I've got Inspector Rosso's... Yes, monsieur. You showed me... I found this in the street, Sergeant. That, monsieur, is a newspaper, no? There's a note written on it. Sala Edine, 1345. Ah, so the meeting with the clown was planned. How do you make that out? The time of the explosion was between half past one and two o'clock, n'est-ce pas? I guess so. But what about the name? Aha! That stumped you, hasn't it? I have never been stumped, as you put it, in my life, monsieur. It is the name assumed by the clown, no? Salah Eddin the clown? I don't think so. See you later, Sergeant. The girl presented a confident but sullen mask to the world, an expression more suited to the face of a delinquent youth. Excuse me, mademoiselle? Hi, my name's George Stobart. Oh, an American by the sound of it. Yeah, that's right, on holiday in Paris. Some holiday, huh? You were here when the bomb went off? Sure was. Sat right out front of the cafe. Did you notice a middle-aged man, maybe 60, with an hat and overcoat? I couldn't believe it. She hadn't even asked how I was feeling. Yeah, he went inside just before the bomb exploded. You weren't related to him, were you? Oh no, nothing like that. I am Nicole Collard from La Liberté. What's that, some kind of nightclub? Uh, no, it is a newspaper. You're a reporter? I'm a freelance photojournalist. Say, you can interview me about the bombing. You know, an eyewitness account. Minutes after the outrage that shook the whole of Paris. You know, real life drama, human interest, that kind of stuff. I'll just stick to the facts, thank you. Did you see who planted the bomb? I know it sounds crazy, but he was dressed like a clown. Oh, God. It's him again. Have you met the clown before? It's a long story. I have plenty of time. I don't. I found this newspaper outside the cafe. That is not a newspaper, it's a gossip rag. There's something written in it. Salah Eddin, 1345. It sounds like a betting tip. The name of the horse and the time of the race. What do you think? I don't think it is. That's too obvious. I wouldn't mind betting. This is a coded message. It's a romantic notion, but I don't think so. Look, the inspector gave me his card. Also? You know him? Oh, yes, we've met. I didn't know his first name was Augustin. It suits him, I must say. Look, the inspector... I didn't know his first... 
Rosso didn't blink when I told him about the clown. It's as if he already knew. That is typical of a cold fish like Rosso. I've seen cheeseburgers with more spunk. Who's the guy you were supposed to meet? His name was Planter. I didn't know him, but he called me last night. He said he had a story which would interest me. He asked me to meet him at the cafe. I guess I'll never know what he wanted to tell me. Uh, not unless you have Rosso's gift for psychic interrogation. You speak very good English for a French girl. Thanks. You speak very good English for an American. How did Plantar get your name? Through the newspaper La Liberté. I'd written an article linking two unsolved murders. One in Italy, the other in Japan. The cases were remarkably similar. A wealthy victim, no apparent motive, and a costumed killer. Planta said he could supply me with more information. Why won't you tell me about this clown? Why do you want to get involved? Because he almost killed me. Isn't that reason enough? I guess so. Listen, I'll give you my phone number. You help me with my story, and I'll let you in on what I know. And let's get one thing straight right now. This is strictly business. Okay, it's a deal. I have to go develop these pictures. A bien pour, monsieur. Fine, I'll uh, see you soon. The muscular workman wore a morose expression, like a silent warning to leave him to get on with his job. Hi, can you spare a few minutes? I thought you'd been arrested. No, it was a misunderstanding. When he pulled that gun, gah, I thought that was it. Those automatics by quite a punch, you know? He made a mistake. He thought I was a terrorist. You, a terrorist? Ha! He was only doing his duty, I guess. Did you see an old guy with a briefcase? Wait. Silly old coot. Do you know what he said to me? Work fascinates me, he says. I could watch it all day. Care beat. I could have knocked his block off. Did you recognize the old man? No. Should I have done? Was he a celebrity? No, but I guess he is now. His name was Plantar. Was? He's dead then? Yeah. That's too bad. Now I wish I hadn't called him what I did. If only I could turn back the clock. If only I'd been more tolerant. Regret and remorse are strange emotions. They really bring out the hammiest actors in people. Did you see a clown come by this way? A clown? Like in a circus? Yeah, with makeup and a big red nose. Huh! Those guys are funny, aren't they? Not in my experience. I love the circus, especially the horses. You haven't answered my question. Have you seen a clown? You think I've got time to watch everyone who passes by? Some of us have to work for a living. Look, I know you're busy, but surely you'd have noticed a clown. I told you already. I didn't see a thing. He was wearing multicolored baggy trousers and makeup. He'd be a poor sort of clown if he didn't. Listen, I have to f say, who are you anyhow? A cop? No, of course not. I mean, do I look like a cop? I guess not. How do you know this guy's a killer? Did you see him in action? Didn't you hear the explosion? The cafe was blown up. The clown killed the old man? That's right. Blew him up with a bomb concealed in his squeeze box. Merde. But why did he go to the bother of dressing up like a clown? Who can unravel the tangled logic of a killer's mind? I guess it's some deep-seated psychological need. Or just plain showmanship. Take a look at this. You told me you weren't a cop. Don't shout about it. I'm working undercover. Who are you looking for? That's confidential. Would you like to read my newspaper?
I haven't got time to read that. Can't you see I'm busy? You could read it on your lunch break. Ten minutes is all I get. And if my boss had his way, I wouldn't get that. He'd have me on a drip, so I didn't have to stop to eat. Oh, take the newspaper and quit complaining. Bah! Look at these damn bleeding out liberals. Cha! Save the dolphins. Catch them and eat them, I say. All that fuss over a bunch of fish. Nah, that's more like it. Look at the size of those. Like champagne bottle corks, no? Ah, what's this? Saladin running in the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe. It's a racehorse? A horse? A legend. Bucephalus reborn, mon ami. Like a streak of lightning she is. Do me a favor, won't you? Keep an eye on my hole. I'm off to put some money on that nag. It was a battered metal toolbox. I'd found just what I wanted. A tool for lifting manhole covers. It was a tent made out of plastic sheeting. It was a huge and weighty looking engineer's telephone. Set into the huge gate was a smaller access door. The door was securely locked. I lifted the cover to reveal what smelt like the entrance to a sewer. It was a shiny red plastic ball sat incongruously on the slippery green slimed floor. As I picked up the plastic ball, I realized it was intended to be worn. It was the clown's red nose. It was a soggy, crumpled paper tissue. I scooped up the sodden tissue. It was cold and greasy, like breakfast leftovers. The railing was put there for a simple reason, to stop people getting past. It worked. It was a small scrap of cloth caught on the rusting spike. I took hold of the scrap of material and unsnagged it from the spike.
Hi there. Hold it right there. You, you swore a rant. <laughs> I knew you'd come back. And now I've got you. What are you talking about? You're trespassing. Come out of there immediately. That's what I'm trying to do. Give me your hand. Ha! <laughs> you won't catch me with tricks like that. Keep your distance, monsieur. Okay, okay. Now, what were you looking for? I was looking for a clown. Huh, ridiculous. Do you really expect me to believe that? He planted a bomb in the cafe and blew it up. What? The cafe? Blown up? Mon Dieu, that is awful. And you say the person responsible was dressed as a clown? That's right. He blew up the cafe, escaped into the sewer, changed his clothes, and came up here. Ah, mon dieu! Then, the man I chased, do you think that man and the clown are one and the same? Well, yes, it had crossed my mind. Ah, that still does not explain what you are doing down the sewer. For all I know, you are in league with him. Oh no, I'm just a tourist. <laughs> Most tourists are content with the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre, or the Pigalle. I didn't realize my waste pipes were such an attraction. Tell me about the man you apprehended. <laughs> what is there to tell? He was a typical criminal type. <laughs> Just like you. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? Oh, uh, she isn't hurt, is she? No, she's fine. Oh, thank heavens. A poor girl like her isn't safe with the likes of you roaming the streets. Can't you understand? I'm not a gangster. I'm an American tourist. <laughs> ah, that's what you say. Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? I, I didn't notice. Uh, now are you going to leave, or do I have to call the police? Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Who is he? The man who was killed in the cafe. I'm going to find the guy responsible. I'll find him. Even if it means following him down every sewer in every city in Europe. Ah, you need some sensible boots. You won't get far in those stupid sneakers. Take a look at this false nose. I've never seen it before in my life. Do you recognize this material? I am not telling you anything. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. It's uh, mm, disgusting. What on earth possessed you to show it to me? Someone has emptied their nostrils into it. This is what I used to open the manhole cover. Just as I thought. You were up to no good down no sewers, weren't you? One slip and I would have been up to my neck. Perhaps you'd like to take a look at my card? Mm -hmm. What is this? Inspector Augustin Rosso? What does that say? Hominoid division? A homicide. I think the ink's smudged. Mm -hmm. Then you are not a tourist. Okay, I'm not. I lied to you. And I'm sorry. Don't apologize, monsieur. You know, I had a feeling there was something different about you. It is your posture, your, your poise. Oh, yes. There is no mistaking the bearing of a, a disciplined man. And uh, I should know. I was in the army, you know. When I was your age, I was fighting for my life in the African desert. Uh, how can I help you, Inspector? Let's start over from the beginning and tell it just like it was. Tell me about the man you apprehended. Oh, he was a mean one, monsieur. He grabbed me in an arm lock. His face suddenly next to mine. His grip was like iron. But he did not know what he was up against. Oh, no. 
he made a big mistake when he took on one of the desert hyenas. Yes, yes, I get the picture. Does the name Plantar mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? So you don't want to hear about my experiences in the desert? I fought to make this country what it is today. I'm sure you did, but I'm a little short of time. Do you know the waitress at the cafe? <laughs> you, you, you can't suspect her, surely. Just answer the question, please. Yes, uh, I know her. Quite well, you could say. Uh, she came to work at the cafe oh, uh, six, uh, seven months ago. I look forward all week to the relief she gives me when she visits. Really? So you'd miss her if she wasn't there? Oh, mais oui! Who else would I find to cut my toenails? Was the guy you saw carrying a briefcase? Why, yes, he was, clutched in his arms like a baby. That belonged to his victim. Oh, what do you think was in it? Drugs? Stolen jewels? I don't know, but the killer thought it was worth a man's life. <laughs> Nothing is worth that, monsieur. Take a look at this false nose. Aha, uh -huh. that looks like a clown's nose to me. Precisely. He must have dropped it in his panic. Unless he wanted you to find it. Why would he want to do that? To put you off the scent. Did I show you my tool? Ah, uh, oui, monsieur. Just like mine, except <laughs> that it is much smaller. Does this piece of material mean anything to you? Ah, that is the same cloth as the jacket I found. I'd recognize that pattern anywhere. Did I show you this tissue? No, we miss you. Now, about the jacket you found. Do you have it here? No, monsieur. One of the sleeves was badly torn, so I sent it for repair. <laughs> a pity, because otherwise it was a fine piece of quality tailoring. It had the tailor's name inside on the label. Where did you send the jacket? I gave it to an itinerant Romani seamstress. Just my luck. Was there anything in the jacket pockets? Mm -hmm. Not a sou. You know what I think? Do tell me. Mm -hmm. He changed out of the clown suit and cunningly disguised himself as an ordinary person. Hmm. Looks like I'm up against a mastermind. What was the name on the label? Ah, it was a foreign name. Todrick, I think. Did you get the address? There wasn't one, monsieur. Only a telephone number. Well, I don't expect you to remember a phone number you've only seen once. 74 98 59 You're kidding. That's his phone number? Yes, that's it. A little secret number that I learned in the desert. I was taught the technique by a Tuareg shaman. That's incredible. <laughs> it comes in handy at the supermarket checkout. Uh, do I get a reward? Honesty, monsieur, is its own reward. Then I'm glad I do not rely on honesty to pay the bills. I have to be going. Thanks to your help, the citizens of Paris can sleep a little easier tonight. Vraiment? I was only doing my duty, monsieur. Good luck, inspector. I hope you catch that killer soon. I'll let you out. I hope you find your man, Inspector. So do I. Sergeant Moo? Please go away, monsieur.
I found this red nose in the sewer. What were you doing down there? Fishing for clues. That's where the clown went. You still insist you saw a clown, monsieur? Of course. And this novelty nose proves it. It will take more than a plastic proboscis to convince Inspector Rousseau. You don't want this as evidence, then? Certainly not, monsieur. I believe this material came from the clown's clothing. If you are right, monsieur, then the clown must be an Englishman. Well, how do you figure that? Only the English would wear a suit made from material like that. Don't you like the English? It is not so much a question of liking, rather one of taste. They have none. Do you recognize this dirty tissue? No, monsieur, I do not. I found it in the sewer. Perhaps it would be better if you put it back there. No way. This could be an important clue. If you say so, monsieur. What do you suppose this tool is used for, Sergeant Moo? It looks like something an obstetrician would use, monsieur. It was with tools like this that the clown made his escape. I don't understand. He opened up the hole and disappeared into the bowels of the earth. If you say so, monsieur. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantow. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. I've tracked down the clown's movement, Sergeant. Is that so, monsieur? Yeah. There's a man down the street who saw him crawling out of the sewer. Dressed as a clown? No. He changed into ordinary clothes by then. So, how did he know it was the clown? He didn't. But all the clues add up. Little children can add up. But I wouldn't let them manage my bank account. See you later, Sergeant. Hello? Who is this? Hi. My name's George Stobart. You don't know me. Correct, Mr. Stobart. I don't. What can I do for you? Well, I'm trying to trace one of your customers. Could I maybe come over and talk to you? No. No. That's not possible. Oh, okay. Uh, forget it. Listen, all I want is a name. What are you talking about? Who are you working for? I guess you might say I'm acting in the interests of truth and justice. Ah, oh, thank God. I thought you were the police. There are innocent lives at stake, Mr. Todrick. Lives that you could save. You're collecting for charity, yes? No, I'm not. All I want from you is information. Go on. I'm listening. What do you know about the clown who bombed the Café de la Chandelle Verte? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. You're cool, Todrick. But I think you know more than you're saying. I don't know who you be, but sure I am. You don't know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're saying that to make me think you don't know what I mean, but... Oh, this is ridiculous. Quit playing games with me, Todrick. I tell you, I know nothing about no clown. Do you know a guy called Plantar? No, I never heard of him. Did you know that one of your customers was a part-time clown? If a guy feels happy with a funny nose and custard down his pants, what's the problem? Shall I tell you what happened to Plantar? How he was killed in cold blood? I told you, I never heard of Plantar. I expect Plantar's a family man, don't you? In their little apartment, Madame Plantar is cooking the supper listening for the familiar sound of her husband's key in the door. Junior is waiting for his daddy to come home from work. He can't wait to show him the merit marks he earned in school today. Only tonight, Monsieur Plantar won't be coming home. You forgot the puppy. Huh? The faithful puppy dog, waiting for the sound of his master's voice. Well, maybe they don't have a dog. What do you think? I don't know Plantar. I never heard of Plantar. 
None of this has anything to do with me. Thanks for nothing, Todrick. Bonjour, Kula. Oh, hi. It's George Stobart, the American at the cafe. Ah, oh, oui. Uh, you said to call if I could help. Have you any news for me? You bet. I met a witness who spoke to the clown. And I know where the killer gets his suits. No kidding. Hey, I'm impressed. You are? Well, it wasn't easy. Look, why don't you come here to my apartment? Fine. Where do you live? 361 Rue Jarry. Okay, I'll come right over. The woman was doing something with a pair of needles that couldn't be described as knitting. She was a cheery old soul, the kind you'd walk across the street to avoid. I inhaled deeply, expecting to experience the scent of the flowers. What I got was traffic fumes. Oh, hi. Bonjour, monsieur. Would you like me to foretell your future? Uh, no thanks. I'm very good, and it only takes a minute. Thanks all the same, but I'm not superstitious. Besides, if it only takes a minute, that's not much of a future to look forward to. I've changed my mind. Will you tell my fortune? You're going on a long journey. My, oh my, what a surprise. Can you tell me anything I don't already know? Ten francs, please, my dear. Ten francs? That's a ripoff. Please yourself. Are the flowers for sale? Oui, monsieur. Okay. I'll take a bunch of those white ones. I wouldn't do that if I was you. No? They are lilies, monsieur. Some people associate them with death. Yikes. Well, thanks for telling me. What other flowers do you have? Dahlias. What do they signify? Insecurity. Hmm. I don't want to give her the wrong idea about me. What about the tall yellow ones? Those are iris, the flame of passion. And the little yellow ones? Sensuality. Well, they're no use to me. I want to make an impression, not jump down her throat. How does this fortune-telling routine work? If I knew that, I wouldn't be selling flowers for a living. Haven't you ever wondered why you were blessed with the gift? Well, it's a bit like satellite television, I suppose. Some of us are born with a, a built-in receiver dish. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. Can you really foretell the future? Only time will tell, monsieur. The strange thing is, I can't seem to see myself in the future. Other people? I have no problem. But when I try to see what might happen to me, nothing. That must be scary. Maybe. I figure it's a kind of natural safety mechanism. Either that, or I don't have a future. Do you know a young woman called Nicole Collard? Yes, I do. She lives upstairs from me, in the apartment block across the street. The door isn't locked, but you'll need to give it a gentle nudge. It sticks, you see, because of the damp. The landlord said he'd fixed it before winter sets in. He's been saying that for three years. How long has Mademoiselle Collard lived here? A few months. She's in for a shock when the cold weather comes. Drafty windows, insufficient heating, it's a struggle to keep warm. The only reason I stay is because the rent is cheap. Your young lady, she deserves better. 
I thought Mademoiselle Collard was a successful photographer. Not as successful as she makes out for all her fine clothes. Oh, I've heard her crying herself to sleep at night. That's awful. Now don't you let on that I've told you. She's proud, that woman. Too proud, if you ask me. Do you recognize this nose? No, monsieur. What can you tell me about this tissue? Nothing. What can you tell me about this material? It's a very expensive piece of cloth, monsieur. What do you make of this tool? Is it something a dentist would use? No, it's for raising manhole covers. Formidable. Did I show you this tool? Yes, my dear. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Remembering the flower seller's advice, I pushed the door gently just above the lock. Bonjour. I'm glad you could make it, monsieur. Please, call me George. Fine. I'm Nicole. Take a seat, George. Eh bien? And what have you been up to? I've been exploring the sewers beneath the cafe. I thought I could smell something bad. The clown used the sewer to escape and to change out of his costume. I guess he was in a hurry. He left his jacket behind. And? I got his tailor's phone number. You had better luck than I did. Luck, she said. Luck! Hard work, I'd call it. What happened? I took my photographs to the editor, but he wasn't interested. Can you believe it? He told me to drop his story. But you're not about to do that. Oh, no. I am going to find out what's behind these killings. You know what I think? It's a conspiracy. The police in three different countries have kept very quiet about the murders. The press don't connect them at all. They blame them on political, religious or militant minority extremists. Well, that covers just about everyone. Tell me more about the clown's previous victims. The first was Arnaud Belota, the millionaire pharmaceutical baron. He made his money from amphetamines in the post-war slimming and diet boom. Imagine it! Millions of housewives literally spitting their butts off. Was he killed for his money? No. He had no living relatives, and his fortune went to the orphanage where he grown up. The only witness in the case was his Filipino au pair. She swears he was led to his death by a snowman. <laughs> What about the clown's second victim? Yamada, the controversial Japanese green politician. He inherited his fortune from his father's electrochemical consortium. He was committed to dismantling Japan's automobile industry. I can't see him gaining much support with a loony policy like that. Yamada was a man of vision. He was years ahead of his time. If you say so, how did he die? At the end, or should I say, flippers of a giant emperor penguin. A snowman, a penguin, and now a clown. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is scary. And I'll tell you what, I won't be accepting any invitations to costume parties. I don't blame you for being scared. I am too. But this story could be my only chance of a big break. Or a premature death. I found this false nose in the sewer. Hey, what's this inside it? The contents of someone's nose? Don't be cross, George. It says La Rise du Monde. Masks and costumes. It's a costume shop near the Gare Saint-Lazare. I'll check it out. Maybe the owner remembers who hired the clown costume. Why don't you put it on, George? No way am I wearing this. I'd look really stupid. Besides, he might have had a cold. This is the tool I used to get into the sewers. Fascinating, George. 
You're not interested, are you? Oh, of course I am. I think it was very brave of you to go down those sewers. Yeah? Well, it was kind of scary, but... Well, I had a job to do. This is the tool I used to get into the sewers. Yes, you showed me before. I found a piece of material near the cafe. When I showed it to the concierge, he recognized it right away. It's very distinctive, all right. Just wait until you see this. I developed the film I shot at the cafe. Here, George, it's an enlargement I made. Look what that guy's wearing. Checkered pants. The same material as I found in the sewer. That's right. This guy shouldn't be difficult to find. Oh, no? Take a close look at his left cheek. A scar in the shape of a horseshoe. Oh, a crescent moon. I found this tissue down the sewer. Oh, boy, that's disgusting, Georges. I think the stuff on it is grease paint, like actors use. Or clowns. It's still disgusting. Get rid of it. Did I show you this tissue? Yes, George. I asked you to get rid of it. I showed you the red nose, didn't I? Yes, you did. Why don't you pay a visit to the shop it came from? I just might do that. How come you enlarged this photograph of me? Because I noticed the guy behind you, of course. Tell me more about yourself. Oh, there is not much to tell. Well, how did you get into photography? I guess I owe that to my father. He bought my first camera. I was eight and my parents had just split up. Did you live with your father? Yes, my mother went off with her new boyfriend. I don't mind. Papa was all I needed. Four years later, he died in a plane crash. Ah, I'm sorry. Well, it's all right. I don't mind talking about him. He was more like an older brother, really. Always joking and laughing. Papa always wanted I should study art. That's why I went to college. Did you learn about photography at college? Oh, God, no. I couldn't afford the materials. We were billed for everything we used. Paint, canvas, paper. Most of my year turned to minimalism. It was cheaper. I used to go poaching in the park for squirrel hair. The only time I wasn't hungry was the term I did printing. I used to eat the potatoes. You're making fun of me, aren't you? Oh, no. Do you have a boyfriend? That's none of your business. I'm going back out to search for that clown. Where? Well, I guess I could visit the costume shop. Good idea. recognize the man in this photograph? Mmm, what a hunk. He's a killer. I can see that. His eyes say it all. Do you recognize the man in this? No. See you later. That's right, monsieur. The dummy wore a traditional Puro costume. At least, I guess it was a dummy. As I was about to touch the dummy, I realized it had the same color eyes as Nico. The strange thing was, I hadn't realized I'd noticed the color of Nico's eyes.
It was an antique phonograph, the kind you have to wind by hand. The guy's spoon-shaped face was mournful and humorless. He looked like a vegetarian in a slaughterhouse. Excuse me. Bonjour, monsieur. Please, come in. Welcome. Leave the mundane world behind, for in these four walls, fantasy is king. Uh, I don't want a costume. Didn't you ever dress up when you were a child? Not that I remember. Incredible. You'll be telling me next that you never shared your elder sister's lingerie. I don't have a sister, and I think I'd look pretty silly in a brassiere. I just need some information. Of course. How can I help you? Have you heard of a man named Plantile? I do not recall any one of that name. I'm looking for a man who hired a clown costume from you. Oui, monsieur. I do not see how I can help. Don't you keep a record of costumes that you've rented out? Of course, monsieur, but... Uh... Well, then, I'd like to check your records. Give me the names of everyone who's rented a clown suit. Impossible. There are too many. The clown I'm looking for is a cold-blooded killer. Give me his name, and I'll see he's brought to justice. I'd help you if I could, but you can't expect me to remember all my customers. You see, the clown costume is our most popular line, monsieur. On average, we hire out more than 30 clown suits a week. You'll have to give me more to go by. A description, perhaps? How come clowns are so popular? I think it has something to do with their unpredictable nature. Personally, I think clowns should be banned, along with mimes. Oh, come now. Who doesn't love clowns? Me, for one. Do you want this red nose back? Not after it's been worn, thank you. Does this dirty tissue mean anything to you? Hmm. Let me smell that. Best Imer's number seven, white pancake. Theatrical grease paint, right? Oh, oui, monsieur. La crème de la crème of Cespian accoutrement. Have you sold any of it recently? Yes, two can. About this tissue. I have already given you my professional opinion. What does this tool mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. What does this tool mean to you? Nothing, monsieur. Do you recognize this man? Ah oui? He was here this morning. He chose two costumes. Bozo the Clown and Seamus the Pixie. A pixie? Very smart. Green silk with a taffeta lining. He gave me his name as Monsieur Khan. Are you sure this is the same man who hired the clown suit? Certainement, Monsieur Khan. Thanks for your help, buddy. My pleasure, monsieur. Allow me to shake you by the hand. Huh? Uh, well, okay. What are you trying to do, kill me? You did not find it amusing? I never saw the funny side of electroshock therapy. Eh bien, it is yours to keep. A gift? Do I need a license? No, but I give you a word of warning, monsieur. What? Remember to switch it off before you visit the toilet.
Salut, Josh. What news? I've been to the costume shop. Yeah, I like it. What are you supposed to be? I didn't hire a costume. These are my clothes and you know it. Did you ask about the clown? Yeah. He used the name Khan. He hired two costumes, the clown and a pixie. Then we're one jump ahead of him. How do you make that out? He probably plans to use the pixie suit next time he kills. Oh God, don't let it be me. I don't deserve to die at the hands of a pixie. Don't be silly, George. That won't happen. Oh, no? No, because every time you see a pixie, you're going to run like hell. What are you doing to help trace the killer clown? Research, George. Yeah? You have a copy of the clown's yearbook? I have a telephone and lots of contacts. Oh. Well, did you find anything useful? Not yet. I'm employing my first and most useful weapon. What's that? Patience. Oh, I've heard of that. Isn't it a substitute for decisive thinking? Have you found out any more about the murders? Well, it may be nothing, but both the clan's victims visited Paris earlier this year. When? The second week of July. They were both here at the same time. Did they meet? I don't know, but I can't imagine it was coincidence. The guy at the novelty shop gave me this. What is it? A hand buzzer. You put it in your hand and give people electric shocks. Why? It's a gag, a practical joke. <laughs> if you ever use it on me, I'll break your arm. Okay, okay. I get the picture. Did I show you this tissue? Yes, George. I asked you to get rid of it. This is the tool I used to get into the sewers. Yes, you showed me before. May I use your telephone? Sure, go ahead. Thanks. Hello? Who is this? Mr. Todrick? Oh, it's you again. What now? The man I'm looking for is called Khan. He bought a suit from you, remember? Mr. Khan. Yes, I remember him. Yes, I delivered the suit to his hotel. The Hotel Ubu. Uh, I uh, don't remember the room. It was upstairs. The second room on the right-hand side of the corridor. Thanks, Todrick. That's all I wanted to know. Now I've got you, Mr. Clown. Now we're getting somewhere. Do you know the Hotel Ubu? The Ubu? Yes, I do. That's where the clown stayed. Good work, George. See you later. Where are you going now? I could go hang out at the Hotel Ubu. Watch out for Khan, George. Don't worry, I will. Would you like to shake my hand? No, I wouldn't. I can see the future, remember? See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. The guy looked just like a weasel. The man looked like an amiable Bigfoot. Excuse me. Yes? Have you heard of a guy called Plantar? No. 
That name means nothing to me. Do you know a man by the name of Khan? No, I don't. It's very important I get to see him, and... I told you, I don't know it. I'm looking for a clown. Are you trying to be funny? No, I really am looking for a clown. There are no clowns here except you. What does this tool suggest to you? Hard labor. What does this tool suggest to you? Hard labor. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? No, I never saw him. Forget it. Excuse me. Yeah? You ever meet a guy called Plantow? No, I ain't. You missed your chance. If you're quick, you'll catch him at the coroner's. Do you happen to know a guy named Khan? That ain't nobody I know. I'm sorry to be a burden on your brain. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? No, I ain't. Don't tell me I missed him. Oh, that's too bad. I love the clowns, don't you? I've seen daytime television that was funnier. I love it when the little guys get hurt. That figures. Custard pies, hose pipe down the pants, then smack a plank in the kisser. Do you recognize the guy in this photograph? Is this a trick question? No, I simply asked if you recognized him. Okay then. No, nope, I don't. What do these... Oh, never mind. See you later. Not if you see me first. The sign listed the price of rooms, and boy, were they expensive. The killer must have been earning a fat wad to pay for accommodation like this. The woman was obviously English. She had all the qualities of Bodicea, Elizabeth I, and Margaret Thatcher rolled into one. It wasn't a pretty sight. I recognized the guy. It was the Nobel Prize winner from the country whose name I couldn't pronounce. Hi there, ma'am. Well, hello. What can I do for you? I'm looking for a man. You disappoint me, my dear. For one foolish moment, I thought. But never mind. Aren't you going to tell me your name? George. George Stobart, ma'am. How sweet! I once had a stable boy called George. I am Lady Piermont. The common reaction is to kneel and stutter, but it's not obligatory. A real lady? I mean... You're an honest-to-God aristocrat? Oh, I don't know about that. A few of my ancestors are honest, not even to God. I can trace my family back to the Normans, but don't let that intimidate you, George. Beneath that impressive pedigree, I'm just flesh and blood. The blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England, so to speak. You appear distracted, George. Is there any way I can help you? Are you here in Paris on vacation? No, darling, I'm on holiday. I needed to get away after Algie's funeral. I didn't realize you were mourning the loss of a loved one. I'm not. He was my husband. I'm sorry to hear about your husband's death. You wouldn't be if you knew him, my dear. It gave me the opportunity to take a well-deserved holiday. Daphne suggested a change of scenery. Paris, she said. A wild romance is just what you need to take your mind off the inquest. Well, the closest I came to romance was being wooed by a drunken Breton ship. I must say I was disappointed with his cock van. Not at all what I was expecting. I was thinking of cutting my holiday short, packing my bags and heading back to Hemel Hempstead. That was until last night. What happened to you last night? I 
was stricken, Mr. Sturbot. Cupid's arrow has cleft my bosom. They couldn't really miss. It was just as I'd always imagined it should be. The intimacy of candlelight, romantic music tinkling across the room, and then a stranger's glance. Those brooding eyes, that suave manner, those tight trousers. He was the man I'd been waiting for all my life. I'm glad he finally turned up after all these years. Ah, but it wasn't to be. He was merely toying with my affections. And if I ever catch up with him, he's dead. Who was the guy who led you on? His name is Merlin. Did you know there's a gangster out front? What makes you think he's a gangster? The Italian suit and the bulge in his pocket? I know plenty of men with Italian suits and bulges in their pockets. That doesn't necessarily make them gangsters. I'm looking for a murderer. Good heavens! You're a private detective. That's correct, ma'am. What's the term you Americans use? It's on the tip of my tongue. I believe what you're thinking of is Dick. Precisely. Have you come across a man who calls himself Khan? I am familiar with only one person named Khan. Genghis Khan, the legendary Mongol barbarian chieftain? No, darling. Kevin. Kevin Khan? I never heard of him. I'd be most surprised if you had, darling. He's a pharmacist in Hemel Hempstead. Organizes fundraising for the Rotarians. Lovely man. Does he have a scar on his cheek? I really wouldn't know, sweetie. Can you think of any use for this tool, ma'am? Oh, I can think of someone I'd like to use it on. Can you think of any use for this tool, ma'am? Oh, I can think of someone I'd like Does this tissue mean anything to you? Good God, no! I just thought the smell might be familiar. Please, darling, put it away. I'm no shrinking violet, but that object makes me feel quite queasy. Do you know what this is? Oh, yes. I'd say it was a clown's nose. That's right. It was worn as a disguise by a vicious killer. Good heavens, are you trying to alarm me? It's true. He uses the name Khan. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? My God, it's him! That's Merlin! She represented everything I loved about the English. The lady was totally deranged. Merlin? You mean King Arthur's wizard? Good heavens, no! Monsieur Merlin is a fellow guest. He's the man I've been telling you about. That's the man who spurned me. The man you know as Merlin is a fake. What do you mean, sweetie? He's a murderer. He also uses the name Khan. I am shocked, Mr. Stobart. Shaken. I took him to be a gentleman, a man of honor. Do you know, I'd rather like to assist you in stitching him up. When did you last see Merlin? It was no more than an hour ago. He came downstairs and spoke to that clerk, Chappie. Something passed hands. I couldn't see what exactly. A briefcase? No, smaller than that. A bundle of papers, perhaps. The clerk put it in the hotel safe and Merlin went out. Are you sure you saw Merlin putting documents in the safe? Yes, darling, positive. I wonder what they were. Obviously something of great importance. Yeah. I'd sure like to get my hands on whatever it is. I'll bet they had something to do with Plantow's briefcase. Has Merlin returned to the hotel? No, he hasn't. Are you going to search his room? If I could get in there, I would. I have to go, ma'am. Excuse me, didn't I see your picture in the news? You're that Nobel Prize winner from some unpronounceable Eastern European state. Yes, that is me, in person. I don't want to worry you, but have you had...
had any threats on your life? You know, mysterious phone calls, letters made up of headlines cut from the newspaper. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you know a guy called Plantow? I don't know anybody in Paris. Oh, well, this guy's dead anyhow. Why do you ask me about dead men? I have seen enough of death to last me a lifetime. I'm, uh, sure you have. Have you seen a clown? I beg your pardon? The clown. A guy in funny pants. Have you seen him? My pants are from England. Marks and Spencer. They are a pleasure and a comfort to wear with much support. I'm real glad to hear that. You know, it's good to know you Nobel Prize winners are human, too. In my country, the people make do with string and egg cartoons. For pants? For everything. Oppression is the mother of ingenuity. Do you recognize this man? He calls himself Khan. Yes, I know this man. Why do you carry his photograph? I'm a private detective. Have you any idea what this tool might be used for? I cannot guess. Would it mean anything if I told you it was for lifting drain covers? Such technology fills me with wonder. Do you recognize this tool? Already you have astounded me with your advanced Western prong. What's your interest in Khan? He is an enemy of my people. You know he's a killer. Of course, amongst other things. Would you help me investigate Khan? That is not possible. My instructions are to observe. I cannot jeopardize my position as an honored guest of this country's government. Thanks for your help. Goodbye. Hanging from a brass hook was a key and a plastic tag. The clerk wore a disdainful expression like he'd been born with it. I want some information. Who are you? The police? I'm conducting a private investigation. Ah, I know only too well what you mean. That is one of the drawbacks of the catering business. When people book into an hotel, they leave their morals at home, no? Do you know a man named Plantow? No, monsieur. I'm looking for a man who dresses like a clown. This is a highly respectable hotel, monsieur. There are no clowns here. If you say so. Do you recognize this red nose? No, monsieur. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Yes, monsieur. That man is one of our guests. What name? <laughs> I cannot tell you that. What do you make of this tool? <gasps> Stunning, monsieur. I bet you handle it like a professional. What do you make of this tool? <gasps> Stunning, monsieur. Hey, shake my hand. I'd rather not, monsieur. I'm still sore from the shock administered by one of the guests. He was secretly concealing an electrical device in the palm of his hand. Practical jokes are so puerile, don't you think? Oh, yeah, sure. What do you make of this tissue? Do you wish me to dispose of it for you, monsieur? Hey, no! It could be useful. I'm holding on to this. As you wish, monsieur. Perhaps you would like a little plastic baggie to keep it in? Nah, it's fine the way it is. I'd like to retrieve something from your safe. Ah, oui, monsieur. May I see some form of identification? Uh, like what? A driving license, perhaps? I don't drive. Your passport? I don't have it with me. I could show you my operation scar. 
I'm sorry, monsieur. I must have some form of unique ID. You won't find a more unique ID than my scar. I'm sorry. I must insist on a more traditional identification. Rats. About the key hanging on the hook over there. Oui, monsieur. Which room is it for? Number 21. Is that room taken? No. The guests checked out this morning. I'd like to check into room 21. That is not possible. How come? You said it was vacant. It is reserved for another guest. Rats. No, monsieur. Dutch. Thanks for your help, buddy. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? Would you distract the clerk while I borrow a key? Are you asking me to aid you in a criminal act, darling? Oh, no. It's the key to an empty room. And why, may I ask, do you wish to gain access to an empty room? Do you plan to squat? No, ma'am. Scouts honor? I was never in the Boy Scouts, ma'am. Oh, you should have been. What were your parents thinking of? It's a fine way for a boy to get licked into shape. Now tell me, why do you want to get into that room? I'm hoping it's the key to Merlin's room. Well, how can I refuse? I shouldn't think my feminine charms would be much use in this case. But a good dose of English arrogance might do the trick. I say, you there, flunky. We, oui, madame. Listen carefully. You do understand English, don't you? But of course, madame. Good. I wish to deposit some jewelry for safekeeping. I understand. Are you quite certain? Oh, bien sûr, madame. Over to you, my dear. There was no one registered under the name of Khan, but the name in the book for room 22 was Merlin. The sign on the door read 21. Maybe it wasn't the right room, but this was the right key. The door was locked. It was a massive mahogany wardrobe. There was nothing in the wardrobe apart from a vague, lingering smell of camphor. The cabinet was empty, but it smelt of onions. No kidding, it really did.
The assassin had been too smart to leave incriminating evidence beside his bed. The closet was a solid, impressive piece of antique furniture. The bed was freshly made, and the crisp white sheets told me nothing about the killer's habits. There was nothing in the pockets of the pants. The door led back into the hall, idiot. I had the kind of feeling in my stomach that would usually send me running to the bathroom. The pants matched the jacket which the killer had lost in Paris. I couldn't believe my luck when I found two items in the pockets of the pants. The first was an ordinary matchbook. No matches, no clues. The second was a pass card which read, Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. What now, monsieur? Does this pass mean anything to you? That is Monsieur Merlin's property. That's right. Merlin the murderer. I want to see what he's left in your safe. Impossible. I cannot betray his confidence, no matter what you say he's done. You're making a big mistake. Maybe I can live with that. Thanks for your help, buddy. Hi, ma'am. Hello, George. What can I do for you now? I found this pass in Merlin's room. So? That deceitful little man is passing himself off as an electrician, is he? Uh-huh. This guy probably has a million faces. I showed the pass to the clerk, hoping he'd give me Merlin's papers. But he wouldn't buy it. He's too scared. I'll give him something to be scared of. Follow me, George!
Did you place the package from Merlin in the hotel safe? I did, madame. And did my friend here show you Merlin's identification? Indeed he did, but... What's the problem? He isn't Merlin. A mere academic detail. Give him the package. But that is against the law. I happen to be a justice of the peace, you silly man. I am the law. If he tries anything, shoot him, George. My pleasure, Lady Piermont. One moment, please. You know, I haven't enjoyed myself this much since Greenham Common. I don't know what I would have done without you, Lady Piermont. Voila, monsieur. Le manuscrit de Monsieur Merlin. Thanks. How satisfying. An Anglo-American alliance that actually worked. The clerk had given me a tightly rolled sheet of parchment. I decided not to unroll it until I was safely back in Nico's apartment. Uh, no. I knew this was no way to treat an ancient manuscript, but I couldn't let it fall into the hands of the goons waiting outside. Just a minute, monsieur. What's your problem? No problem, if you cooperate. What do you want? Just a routine security check, nothing to worry yourself about. Oh, well, all right. Search him, Flap. You bet! Hey, knock it off. Get off, you big ape. Nothing, Guido. Zilch! Our apologies, monsieur. What? I had to report you to the authorities. Round here, we are the authorities. You want I should break his arms? No. Let him go, Flap. If the manuscript was what Flap and Greedo were after, they were going to be disappointed. I couldn't wait to get back to Nico's apartment and check it out. You're just not going to believe what I've found. It's not another part of the clan's costume, is it? It's a medieval manuscript. Khan left it in the safe at the Ubu. It's incredible. Is this what he took from Plantark? It could be, which means it's worth enough to kill for. Look there, two guys on the same horse. Oh, yeah. Maybe they couldn't afford one each. What of it? Have you ever heard of the Knights Templar? 
Their official seal was an image of two knights sharing a horse. Whatever this manuscript means, it's connected with the Templars. How come you know about these knights? I learned about them while writing an article on the Crusades. This guy, named Hughes de Payen, arrived one day at the court of King of Jerusalem. He offered to protect the Christian pilgrims from the displaced Muslim army. The king would be able to guarantee safe transit to Christians in the Holy Land. Safer journeys meant more pilgrims, and pilgrims meant trade and wealth. The Templars proved invaluable to the king as a mercenary army. It was said that they never asked how many the enemy numbered, just where they were. And as the years went by, the Templars grew in wealth and number. They were so rich. Even kings came to them for loans. But at the height of their power, they fell foul of the King of France. He rounded them up and turned them over to the Inquisition. Thousands of Templars were subject to torture and confessed to heresy. Of course, at the end of the Inquisition, there wasn't much they wouldn't confess to. The last Grand Master Jacques de Molay was burned alive. But the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found. Jeez, so the treasure is hidden, waiting to be discovered? If there ever was a treasure, it's been lost for 600 years. Anyway, we're supposed to be investigating a serial killer, not a medieval treasure trove. But maybe that's what the clown and his accomplices are after. Maybe this manuscript is the key. You'd better leave it here for safekeeping. Think about it, George. One guy's already died for it, as you said yourself. Besides, that parchment is fragile. Okay, okay, I'm convinced. You keep hold of it. Let's take another look at the manuscript. Let's face it, we need help, George. Someone who knows about these things. Who do you suggest? Indiana Jones? I know a guy who specializes in medieval studies. His name is Lobino. Huh. Some stuffy old fossil who gets horny over ancient relics, I suppose. Far from it. Andre isn't the stereotypical professor you have in mind. Where can I find this Lobino guy? At the Krone Museum. I'll give you the address. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. She reminds me of the Wicked Queen in Snow White. She was the one who said mirror, mirror on the wall, wasn't she? She made me cry so much when I was a kid, Mom carried me out of the movie theater. She didn't frighten me in the least. Like I said, I was only a kid. I didn't like the crocodile in Peter Pan either. A knight with a crystal ball. Now, there's something written on the scroll beside the knight. Yes, but it's written in Latin. Per disciplinum. Mayor Lux Videbis. By my teachings, you will see the light. You speak Latin? Where did you learn a trick like that? A trick? I studied law, okay? I can read Latin. Ma, you're touchy. Tell me that again. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a guy working on a loom. He's weaving a carpet or a tapestry. Or a duvet cover. It's a clue to a place, I reckon. Somewhere famed for weaving and ships. Where folk live in barrels? It beats copper boxes. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. The only mythological bull I know of is the Minotaur, but he was only half bull. I don't think I'd like to be half a bull. Even if it was the bottom half. What's that object between them? It looks like a gem on top of a tripod. I found this in the killer's room. 
What is it? A credit card? ID. Thomas Merlin of the Gruber Electronics Corporation. Never heard of him or the company. I found this matchbook in the killer's hotel room. It's from the Club Alamut. Never heard of it. Is there anything written inside it? No. What were you expecting? If this was a movie, there'd be a clue. A name or an address. That's no use. There aren't even any matches in it. Oh, well. I'll keep it as a souvenir. Maybe I'll check out the Kroon Museum. I'm sure you'll find it useful, Georges. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? No, but I can tell you one thing. There's no such place as the Club Alamu in Paris. Can you tell me anything about this security pass? I can tell it doesn't belong to you. How come? Give me some credit. If you're an electrician, I'll eat my antirhinums. You're a remarkably talented lady. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Through the grimy glass, I could see several large shapes in a gloomy room. What they were, I couldn't imagine. In the case was a spindly tripod, blackened with age and pitted with rust. It was identical to the tripod pictured on the manuscript. A notice identified it as 15th century from Western Ireland. It had been found in Loch Marne at the site of a Knights Templar preceptory. Ireland! What's that? This tripod was found in Ireland. I will have to ask you to keep your voice down. I'm sorry, I was excited. I tried to sneak my hand inside while the guard wasn't looking, but the case was locked. The case contained two rows of silver coins. Each coin on the lower row showed a portrait of a guy with a huge nose. I looked down at a collection of tools with wooden handles and tarnished metal blades. There were knives, chisels, and spikes fanned out in a semicircle. I guess there's always been a need for home improvement. The case contained some fragments of pottery. They looked to me like broken flower pots. Above them, a sign read, L'Age Paleolithique. It was a statue from ancient Egypt. Those old civilizations sure could teach us a few things about art and beauty. It was a tapestry of a lady, a lion, and a unicorn. If I'd had more time, I could have stared at it all day. Pardon me. Oui, monsieur? Are you Lobino? Oh, no. Fancy you mistaking me for him. No. I am the deputy custodian. But Lobino does work here. Work? I wouldn't go so far as to call it that. He studies here most days, but as you can see for yourself, not today. What can you tell me about the collection of pottery? Those are remains of pots used by the original inhabitants of Paris. The Paris 
But people, when did they move out? 15,000 years ago, monsieur. Vanished in the mists of time. Didn't even have time to pack up their pots. I thought the original inhabitants of Paris were a tribe known as the Parisi. That is right, monsieur. Renowned for their pots, you see. In those days, people didn't have much in the way of uh, possessions. A few flints, some animal skins, maybe the odd bone or two. Naturally, when the Parisi came along with their pots, why, everybody wanted one. I guess they must have caused a kind of consumer frenzy. Yeah, oui, they connect the market, cleaned up. You don't know the first thing about those pots, do you? No, monsieur. What can you tell me about the collection of coins? A rare example of silver coinage from the reign of uh, Philippe le Bel. That little old lay buried for centuries in a field on the outskirts of Paris. They're unique. Nothing like them has been found anywhere else in Europe. Who was Philippe le Bel? You don't know? Philippe the Fourth, the King of France. Wasn't he the guy who wiped out the Knights Templar? I have no idea, monsieur. All I know is, he was King of France. I don't even know why he was called Philippe le Bel. Do you know anything about medieval manuscripts? Not me, monsieur. I am no scholar. Though people often mistake me for one. It is the uniform, I guess. They see the clothes. They are impressed. And they ask you to park their cars? They ask me to park the... No, no, no! They assume I am an authority on the exhibits in my care. Whereas you know next to nothing about history. Of course not. All I am saying is, I am no scholar. Not like Monsieur Lobino. Do you know anything about the Knights of the Temple? No, sir. Not a sausage. The sign on the tripod says, it was found at a Templar preceptory. It does. You don't know anything about the tripod, do you? No, I don't. I never had much of a start in life, you see. I owe a little education again to my uncle. He was an optician, but he also doubled as the village school teacher. He taught me the alphabet. Wait, 19 letters of it. The bottom row of the chart was too small even for him to read. So he left them out. Why don't you start over and enroll for adult education? You know, I never thought of that. Do you think if I studied art and did all my homework, I could be a professor of history? At your age? Dream on. Can you give me any further information about the tripod? Certainly, monsieur. It's infamous. That tripod? That belonged to John D. What's the importance of John D.'s tripod? D was the most famous escapologist of the 16th century. The Udini of his time. Don't you mean alchemist? Escapologists use ropes, chains, and handcuffs, not tripods. Well, whatever he was, that is the tripod he used in his experiments. What kind of experiments did John Dee perform with his tripod? Oh, the usual. Didn't you study chemistry at school? Yeah, but we skipped over thaumatology. Can I take a closer look at the tripod? What? Get it out of the case? Ah, uh, no! That tripod is protected by a sophisticated surveillance system. How sophisticated? A painfully loud alarm bell. How is the alarm bell triggered? By the slightest pressure on or movement of any part of the case wherein that tripod is situated. It strikes me that to call your alarm system sophisticated is, well, stretching the truth a little. It has never failed yet. The sophistication is in its simplicity. What does this tool mean to you? That belongs in a museum. Pardon? It is a priceless historical artifact, if I am not mistaken. No, it's a plain old tool for lifting drain covers. I showed you my tool, didn't I? Oui, monsieur. 
Most impressive. Thanks for your help. It was an ancient Egyptian sarcophagus with a beautifully painted effigy of its owner on the lid. Leave it alone. That closet is over 3,000 years old. Closet? It's a sarcophagus. Don't even think of climbing in there, monsieur. You'll be suffocated. I always wondered how it felt to be a mummy. It was an ancient Egyptian. Do you have a fetish about closets, monsieur? I just love the smell of mothballs, I guess. Tripod was definitely the one in the manuscript. The temple connection confirmed it. I was tempted to go to Ireland to check it out. I found the tripod. Where? In the museum. It belonged to the Templars. It was dug up in Ireland at a place called Loch Marn. I have heard of Loch Marn. I read an article about the castle. Take a look for yourself. A popular gossip magazine? You read that rubbish? No, I write it. Professor Nigel Pegram, excavating the medieval castle at Loch Marne. That's strange. What? He resigned his chair at Durham University in order to devote his time to the excavation. Not only that, but he canceled the filming of a fourth series of his popular television program. This site at Loch Marne must be awful important to him. He's a professor of history, they're all cuckoo. All the same, I'd like to talk to this Professor Pegram. How do you feel about a trip to Ireland? Disappointed. Huh? That I won't be going. I want to follow up the Belota case. If you really think Pegram's dam is important, why don't you visit Loch Marne? On my own? I'm not so sure about that. Where is Ireland exactly? What do you know about Professor Pegram? I've seen a television program, Pegram's Past. He's written a book, The Crusader Families of Ireland. I'll bet he'd be interested in the manuscript. I'll see you later. Okay. Keep me informed if you find anything new.
It wasn't the style of the clothes in the shop that caught my eye, but the prices. The same amount of money would feed a starving family for the rest of their lives. I guess people who buy that kind of stuff don't have a problem with their consciences. Several hours later, I arrived in Ireland, the Emerald Isle. I'd been lucky to get a bus from Dublin to the tiny village of Loch Marn. On the way out, the driver told me there was only one service a day. The menu was limited. It read, no food today. I didn't care. I'd lost my appetite somewhere over the Irish Sea. It was a trap door in the sidewalk. I tugged at the trap door, but it was locked from the inside. The young red-haired guy was plainly nervous about something. Perhaps he felt threatened by the presence of a handsome dude like me. My name's George. Pleased to meet you, mister. My name's Fitzgerald. Can I get you another drink? Oh, no, thank you. I, I shouldn't be drinking at all. I'm on tablets of my nerves. It's more than a pint and I'll pass out. Do you know Professor Pegram? No! He's the archaeologist, isn't he? That's right. Where can I find Professor Pegram? I heard he's gone fishing. No. I don't know where. What can you tell me about the castle? There's nothing there. Just an old ruin. How old? I really couldn't tell you. Have you ever explored the castle yourself? I used to play there sometimes, when I was a kid. Then one of the little ones fell off the wall, broke his head and died. No. We didn't go there anymore. You haven't been up there recently? No. Did you work at Professor Pegram's dig? <laughs> what gave you that idea? Have you heard about the gem which Pegram found? I heard a rumor, but you can't believe everything you hear or see, can you? Do you recognize the man in this photograph? Uh, no, uh, at least I don't think so. Look closely. He has a scar on his face. No, I'm sure I don't know him. What do you think this tool is used for? Uh, something to do with horses? Wrong. It's for opening manhole covers. Oh, really? Well, you learn something every day. Did I show you this tool? Yes, you did. See you later. The guy with the fiddle seemed oblivious to everything except his playing. Meanwhile, everyone else in the bar seemed oblivious to him. I'd been taught not to judge people by their appearance or their clothes or the length of their hair. Nobody ever said anything about runny noses. Hi there, old timer. What? Nasty cold you've got there. As soon as the words left my lips, I regretted them. Is there such a thing as a cold which isn't nasty? I put the question to Father Mahoney. Father, says I, why were we born to suffer snot? What did he say? He said, it's my reward for being out all night like a sinner.
<laughs> Pious prig. Anyway, this is no ordinary cold. It is the hay fever. Polynosis? Thank you. You're not a policeman, are you? Excuse me? Police? No. I'd know it if you were. Do you know Pegram, the archaeologist? That's the scrawny fellow who was poking around at the castle, isn't it? No, I don't know him. Do you know where I can find Pegram? I told you, I never heard of him. Can you tell me how to get into the castle? Don't even think about it, me bucko. Lockbarn Castle is haunted. Have you ever seen the ghost? To be sure, with me very own eyes. Can you describe the ghost? It was horrible. A wee stunted beast, long beak, straggly, flappy wings. Are you sure it wasn't a wild animal? A rabbit or a skunk or something? Skunk? In Loch Marne? That'll be the day. No. no, that was a ghost, to be sure. Ghosts don't bother me. I still want to visit that castle. You can't. It's not open to the public. There's no one around to stop me, is there? That's right. Nothing human, anyhow. Can you identify this tool? No. Can you identify... No. Were you aware that Pegram was conducting an archaeological dig? I don't meddle in other people's affairs. They don't interest me. Can I buy you a beer? Very kind, I'm sure. But I don't drink the stuff Leary sells. What's wrong with it? I've seen what it can do. I'll see you later. The guy sat in the corner as if he was a permanent fixture. There was a vacant look on his cow-like face that said quite clearly, nobody home. His elbow rested on an obviously soggy piece of towel. It was an electric glass washer. It looked even older than the barman. The white whiskers on the bartender's flushed face were like garlands on a Christmas tree. The resemblance ended there. The top of his head was too slick and shiny to act as a perch for a Christmas angel. Top of the morning to you. I beg your pardon? Well, that's what you Irish say, isn't it? Do you want something? Or are you just flaunting your xenophobia? Well, I, I was trying to be sociable. <laughs> Is it a room you're after? That's not a bad idea. Do you have a vacancy? I could, if you don't mind waiting until the last guest checks out. No problem. When will that be? When the undertaker comes to collect him. Do you know a man called Pegram? Indeed I do. Are you a friend of his, by any chance? Oh no, I'm just trying to track him down. Me too. That son of a bitch should be locked away. Did Pegram stay here? That's right. In the best room in the house. That's the one with the bed. Can I see Pegram's room? It's been taken by one of the brothers from the reformatory. They come every year for spiritual refreshment. That's a good one. Their idea of refreshment is a good full of stout. I wouldn't want to disturb a man of God. Especially not a big fella from the bad boy's home. I don't blame you, Mick. That brother's got muscles like a muscle man. What can you tell me about the castle? You're the second person to ask me that today. I don't know anything about the castle. It's only an old drone anyway. Who else was asking about the castle? He said he was a reporter. He was asking about the little people. I could have told him a tale or two about the little people. He might have paid me to hear what he wanted me to say. Anyway, I chucked him out on his arse. Good for you, Mick. 
That's the way to deal with journalists. Have you served any, uh, clowns recently? No. You're the first today, eh? Seriously, I'm looking for a man dressed in a clown costume. Uh, would he be having a little white dog with a black patch over the eye? I shouldn't think so. <clears throat> Here's something which might interest you. Huh? Well, what is it? My passport to the sewers of Paris. <clears throat> is that so? Did you see the snow cart last night, Mr. O'Brien? We haven't got a television, Michael. I know that. Um, why is it, if you don't mind me asking? If God had meant us to watch television, we'd all be like Doyle. I take it no one wants to hear about my underground escapades. I'd rather drink me own beer. I'll try a glass of beer, please. Is this your first pint of real ale? Uh, well, I guess so. What's real ale, anyhow? Beer that's brewed from natural ingredients to traditional methods. It shouldn't be kept under pressure or refrigerated. And finally, it should have a good body and distinctive character. In other words, it's flat and warm with bits in, and it makes you fall over. Does this false nose mean anything to you? It's not Red Nose Day again, is it? Uh, I don't know. But this is part of a clown's costume. I know that. Good God almighty. What do you take me for? Do you recognize this man? No, I don't. What do you want with him? I've got a score to settle. I don't want any trouble in the bar, mister. If it's a fight you're looking for, see Father Mahoney. A priest? A man of the cloth? Sure. And he teaches the boys how to box at the youth club. According to Mahoney, it develops character. Isn't that right, Pat? Didn't he teach you the art of pugilism? Doyle. Sorry, Michael. I was miles away. What did you say? Ah, never mind. Here's something which might interest you. It doesn't. Do you recognize the name on this card? No, should I? Nah, it was a long shot. Thanks. No. Hi, my name's Stobart, George Stobart. Hello there, mister. What can I do for you? Do you know Professor Pegram? Do I know him? Do I know the good professor himself? No, I don't. I mean, I know who he is, but I don't know him to talk to. Do you know anything about Pegram's excavation? <clears throat> Only that he didn't have the right tools for the job. What he needed was shovels and a JCB. Pegram was digging for historical <clears throat> remains, not coal. Is that a fact? What the hell for? Is the science of archaeology part. Understanding how people used to live by what they've left behind. One day archaeologists might be digging up our remains. Imagine that, Mr. O'Brien. I wonder what they'll find. Well, it won't be arrowheads and beakers. Fast food cartons and flavored condoms, more likely. Is it true that Pegram found a valuable gem? What? First I heard of it. Where have you been, Pat? For that jam is the talk of every town from Loch Mann to Ballydoon. Nobody told me. The lucky sod. So that's why he scampered. Did anyone from the village work at Pegram's dig? I tried it myself, but that high and mighty history man called me incontinent. What a nerve. Hadn't I dug more holes than the rest of them put together? Do you remember seeing Sean Fitzgerald at the dig? Hmm. Let me see now. I think me brain box needs a spot of lubrication. Can you tell me anything about the castle on the hill? Oh, I don't know much about anything. You should ask Mr. O'Brien here. He doesn't join up writing. Would you be one of them history fellows yourself? 
That's right. Professor Stobart, Miskatonic University. You're an archaeologist, and you're asking us about the castle. Excuse me, Mr. O'Brien. The gentleman was talking to me. How come you didn't leave with the others? I didn't know they'd gone until the landlord told me. No. Can I buy you a drink? You most certainly can. Give me a drink for my friend here. Who? Doyle? Has he conned you into buying for him? Shame on you, Patrick. Same again. Just a point this time, Michael. One point of round coming up. Do you remember Sean Fitzgerald now? I can picture the scene as if it was only last week. Come to think of it, it was only last week. Fitzgerald was there all right. Him and a bunch of students. He was speaking with the boss man. No. Bye for now. Hey. Hello there again, mister. What do you make of this tool? It's for lifting manhole covers. That's right. I uh, found it in Paris. No. Well, you look at that. A French sewer key. Marvelous. What do you make of this tool? It's for lifting manhole covers. Bye for now. Hello there. Uh, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Hey, O'Brien. Uh, can I help you? Do you know where I can find Pilgrim? You're too late to meet that fella. Is he dead? Not that. But he's gone from the village. I saw a pint with our esteemed host, I might add. Why is Pegram's departure upset the land? No. He's lost a paying no. guest, that's why. More than that, there's the question of an unsettled bill. Poor Michael's seen red over the business, and I don't blame him. Can you tell me more about the landlord? Mick Leary? He's what you call a, a would-be sophisticate. The trouble is, his idea of sophistication extends as far as putting paper no. in the lavatory. I never worked out why he did that. It's much too dark in there to read. That's true. Have you ever run your hand over the back of the door? The graffiti is written in Braille. Do you know where Pegram has gone? I'm sorry, but I don't. No. He upped anchor in the dark and shipped out before the dark. Why did he do that? Who knows? A guilty conscience or a secret assignation. Whatever the reason, he'll not be missed in Lochmar. Maybe now the fuss about the gem has died down. We can get back to normal. What can you tell me about the no. castle, Mr. O'Brien? It's a fine sight now, isn't it? Dates back to the 10th century, you know. Most of the existing building was added much later, of course. Are the ruins open to the public? Oh, no, it's much no. too dangerous. Anyway, there's nothing of interest remaining. Pegram thought otherwise, didn't he? Ah, but it's not difficult to get them history boys excited, is it? Give them a bone to play with, and they're happy as puppies. Was it Pegram who dug up the tripod at the castle? The same man, if he wasn't his twin brother. And can you guess what he did with the tripod? He sent it to a museum in Paris. I've seen it. How can I get into the castle? Well, those walls were built specifically to stop people getting in, Mr. Stobart. But I dare say you'll find a way, if you've the will. What can you tell me about the gem which Pegram found? Now, there's a gem which should never have been taken. A man would have to be full of greed to covet that stone. What's your interest in the jewel? You're not a reporter, are you? Oh, no. Thank the Lord for that. Does this tool mean anything to you? I'd say it was for lifting manhole covers. How come you know that? I'm a man of the world, Mr. Stobart. No. Does this tool mean anything to you? I told you, it's for lifting manhole covers. Goodbye for now.
It was an electric pump operated by pushing a small lever. It was a beer-stained piece of toweling. The man's arm lay across the towel, preventing me from moving it. As the man raised his arm to drink, I snatched the towel away. The glass contained a dark liquid like molasses with a creamy white froth on the top. I was about to reach for the pump when I came to my senses. A rash move like that in a strange country with strange customs could be my last. The glass contained a dark... Somehow, I'd managed to drink the thick, sweet brew. I felt strangely compelled to order another, even though my every instinct warned me against it. Excuse me. Uh, yes, sir? May I have another beer, please? Certainly, sir. Same again? Yeah, please. How is this stuff made? That's the secret of the master brewer, sir. Each barrel is lovingly manhandled in time-honored fashion, suspended on skillfully tied ropes of the finest hemp, lowered into the cellar, utilizing the forces of original gravity, like manna from heaven. Thanks. No. Hello. No. Doyle told me you definitely worked at the dig. You don't believe him, dear. Patrick Doyle is a moron and a scoundrel. Even so, he saw you talking to Pegram. You can't prove that, mister. See you later. As soon as the old guy looked away, I grabbed his piece of wire. It was a telephone, incongruous in the rustic setting of the homely bar. Hello, couleur. J'écoute. Nico? Who is this? It's me, George. Oh, hello, George. Where are you? I'm in Ireland. What's it like there? Kind of sleepy. Comatose, even. Did you get to talk to Picaram? I haven't found him yet. I figured I'd call you first. Are you okay? Oh, sure I am. Don't worry about me, George. Any signs of our friend the clown? You're kidding. You probably never even heard of Lochmarn. Hi there. What? What's your name, kid? Who are you calling, kid? Who the hell are you? I'm George Stobart, and I'm with the good guys. You're a head case, mister. A few sandwiches short of a picnic. Cut the crap and tell me your name. Liam McGuire. What are you doing hanging around the bar, McGuire? I'm on the run from me dad. Why? Did you do something bad? I ain't done nothing, boss. You can tell me, kid. Is it your dad? 
Oh, sir, he drinks every last penny down his evil throat. And there's me poor old mother, bedridden and dying of presumption. I tried to buy her medicine. Chopped firewood for father Mahoney till me fingers bled. The old skin flint cheated me too. But I took the pennies he gave me back home. Look, ma, says I. See what your darling son has earned with his own sweat and blood. When suddenly, me dad appears and grabs the loot. I'm off to Dublin, heavy drinking, says he. Watch out till I get back. That's why I runned away. Something in the grin on his face told me he wasn't being strictly truthful. Compared to him, Huckleberry Finn was a candidate for altar boy of the year. Have you seen a guy dressed as a clown? Here in Loch Marne, they all dress like clowns. The man I'm looking for is a dangerous psychotic. Jesus, it's just like that film I saw. Did this clown see? And he's after this kid who saw him kill a guy. He tries to warn the sheriff, only no one believes him. Then, while he's in the tub, the clown cuts him up with a chainsaw. My God. That doesn't sound suitable for a kid like you. Who are you calling a kid? I'm 25. Yeah, right. You're not a day over 14. Oh, no, it's 25 that I am. Married with a car and three kids. Ten kids if you count the wives. What do you think this tool is used for? Lifting drains. Dead right. How did you know that? Work experience course at school. It gives me a choice of going down the drains or up the chimney. You're kidding. What do you think this tool is used for? I told you. Lifting drains. Give me your hand. Get lost. Oh, come on. I just want to show you a little trick. No way, mister. I don't do tricks. Father Mahoney told me I'd burn in hell if I did. I just want to shake your hand, that's all. Oh, all right. Gotcha. Neat, huh? Didn't feel a thing. Do you know a man called Pegram? Can you describe him like on the telly in the cop shows? He's an English archaeologist. I know the man you mean if he's the one. Can you tell me where I'd find Pegram? No, I can't because he's not here now. But if I sees him, I'll ask him. Do you know what Pegram was doing in the castle? Digging for buried treasure. Jewels and gold and skeletons, like in the films. What can you tell me about the castle, Maguire? What do you want to know? Well, can I get inside? No, it's locked up. Does anyone live there? No, only... What? Oh, nothing. You know something about the castle you're not telling me, don't you? No. What is it you're covering up? Is it something you're scared of? I ain't scared of nothing. I'll give you one last chance to tell me about the castle. Oh, yeah? And what if I don't? Then I'm taking you back to school. Oh. There's a ghost. It's called the Phantom of Loch Man. You're not telling me you believe in ghosts, are you? Mister, I seen it with me very own eyes. Last Tuesday night, I went up to see what that dig was about. I just reached the top of the wall when I hears this awful noise. What sort of noise? A horrible snuffling and snorting, like O'Brien's pig, only worse. It was coming from inside the castle. Did you find out what was making the noise in the castle? No fear. I just sat there on the wall like Humpty Dumpty. The moon was cracked and greasy like an old dinner plate. The yard was full of shadows that could have been hiding anything. I would have gone home, but me legs had lost their stuffing. Did you get to see the ghost? Indeed I did. And a fearsome sight it is too. I sat on me ass, waited, while the moon went down. 
Then out he comes from the shadows, all grey and tattered and hunched over like an old bent willow. Then I oh, hears the spluttering and splashing and horrible laughter in the dark. I was so scared. Why, oh, I fell off the bloody wall. I'm sure there's a rational explanation for what you saw at the castle. There is. The bloody place is haunted. I heard that Pegram had found a legendary gem. That's right. It's been the talk of Loch Man all week. You haven't seen the gem, have you? Hell no. I reckon Pegram made off with it. If I was him, I'd go to Amsterdam, chop it up and sell it. He could be living the life of Riley instead of digging holes. Do you know anything about Pegram's dig? He wouldn't let me anywhere near it. I offered to help, but he chased me off. I didn't want to see his smelly old hole anyhow. Did anyone from the village work at the dig? Pegram bought some students and bums with him. He reckoned no one in Loch Man would know what to look for. The only local guy who worked for him was Sean Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald says he's never been anywhere near the dig. He's having you on, mister. Are you sure Fitzgerald worked at the dig? Oh, yes. It was him, all right. Would I tell a lie? Well, he denies it. I saw them together only last night. I wish you'd told me that sooner. What were they doing? Pegram gave Fitzy a box. He didn't look too happy about it. I knew it. But how am I going to persuade him to part with it? Break his fingers. No, I couldn't do that. I could. Thanks for the offer, kid, but I'll try a more subtle approach. Chinese burns? What's Fitzgerald scared of? Everything and everyone. So I shouldn't have any trouble getting him to talk? He's a pushover, but don't scare him too much. Try the soft touch. Butter him up a bit. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. Hello. McGuire says he saw you working at the dig. What's more, he saw you talking with Pegram. I knew this would happen. I knew I'd get caught. Just my luck, grasped up by a delinquent and a dimwit. I need to talk to Professor Pegram, if he's still alive. What do you mean? Is he in danger? Yeah, you too, if I'm right. You're not from the Social Security. Hell no. What makes you think that? Well, I was claiming benefit at the same time I was working for Pegram. I'm not in a position to make judgments, Sean. That's between you and your conscience. All I want is to talk to Pegram about the gem. But he's not here! I know that. But he left that package with you, didn't he? No! <laughs> So where did Pegram go? I don't know. I swear it. He came to see me early this morning. Said he was leaving. He asked me to give this package to a guy called Marque. Show me what's in the package, Sean. I can't do that. Why not? I promised the professor. So what? You didn't have any qualms about your benefit scam. So where's the harm in taking a peek inside <gasps> Pegram's package? You don't know these people. I can't. I don't dare. This is your last chance to show me the package, Fitzgerald. <gasps> I've been patient with you, but now it's time to kick ass. But he'll kill me. Who will? The man from Paris, Jack Marquet. Pegram told me if I gave him the package unopened, I'd hear no more about it. But if I double-crossed Marquet, I'd be dead. I'll deal with Jacques Marquet. No! Pegram! Yeah. 
Give the package to me. No! Why should I trust you? I don't know who to trust anymore. I wish I'd never even heard of the Lockmarn gem. here, Maguire. Come back when you're old enough. What's the lad howling about? A big red sports car. Sean Fitzgerald's been run over. Get out! Noisy little tyke. Maybe you should send out some medicinal brandy maker. No. Oh, yes. And who's going to pay for it? Not me. Me too, neither. I was telling the truth about Fitzy, mister. Okay, okay, calm down. Now tell me what happened. I was standing here, minding me own business, when I saw this beautiful red sports car coming up over the hill. Would you look at that, says I. And I going over to take a closer look. Next thing, Fitzy comes tearing out of the pub and nearly knocks me on the ass. But the car just flies at him. It was too fast for poor old Fitzy. And hit him an awful wallop. He goes flying up on top. Jesus, says I. I thought he was a goner. Next thing, the driver hops out. And I couldn't believe my eyes. He was dressed like a bloody pixie. Did this pixie have a scar on his cheek? I couldn't see. He was wearing a stupid mask. Are you a special agent? Sorry to disappoint you, kid, but I'm not. Have you ever seen this man before? What a slimy character. No, I never seen him. Did Fitzgerald drop anything when he was hit? I didn't see. It all happened so fast. What do you think this wire could be used for? Stealing cars. There's only one problem. The local policeman? No. Nobody in Loch Marne has got a car. What do you make of this, kid? Hey, that's one of Leary's towels. He'll skin you alive. That old windbag doesn't scare me. Anyhow, I'm only borrowing it. You're pretty cool, mister. For an old guy. Do you recognize this matchbook, Maguire? No, sir. I never seen it before in my life. What does this tissue mean to you? Nothing. See you later, kid. Okay, mister. The plastic cover had been smashed by the Pixie's car revealing a switch. I pushed the switch down, but in doing so, it snapped off in my hand. It was impossible to return the switch to its original position. I was about to reach for the... a rash... No. Somehow, I'd managed to drink the thick, sweet brew. 
I felt strangely compelled to order another, even though my every instinct warned me against it. Excuse me. No. Uh, yes, sir. Do you know Sean Fitzgerald very well? I know him enough not to sell him more than two pints. He's like a kid when he gets a few beers inside him. I'm not surprised. He's on medication. For his nerves. There's nothing wrong with his nerves. He's just screwy. Hey, how about another drink? See him again? Hmm. Do you serve cocktails? I'll serve anyone with manners. And honey. No, I'm serious. Have you considered turning McDevitt's into a cocktail bar? Cocktails are chic, cool, and popular with younger drinkers. What? Kids in the bar? Can you imagine it? Pinball, pimples, and puke. Uh, right, I get the picture. I'll settle for a glass of stout. I'm sorry, but the pump appears to be broken. I could fix it for you. I don't think so. This is a job for a professional electrician. Oh, well, at least the glass washer is still working. It's not my dear, is it? No. It just so happens I'm an electrician. Check out my credentials. Well, no. Isn't that marvelous? <laughs> Here's a house bedeviled with faulty wiring of a wayward nature. Here's you, an electric man, with a little plastic card to prove it. Hmm. I still want to see what you can do before I let you touch me beer pumps. You can make a start on the glass one. <laughs> and when you finish that, will you take a look at the pumps? There was nothing physically wrong with the glass washer. I couldn't see anything obviously wrong with the machine. I figured it must be the wiring. It was an electrical plug attached to the glass washer. I used all my knowledge of electrical engineering to examine the plug. It seemed fine to me. There was nothing physically wrong with the glass washer. I replaced the fuse with a piece of wire. I knew it was dangerous, but I was desperate enough to disregard everything I knew about standard safety precautions. Excuse me, Mr. Leary. I fixed your glass washer, no problem. Bingo! And a blessing to all the saints. A free half pint to that man on the house. Now, could you take a look at the beer pumps? Well, I guess so, but I'm not making any promises. If you can't fix them, I'll have a riot on me hands. The pumps are in the cellar, right? That's right. You'll find a flashlight down there somewhere. What a dumb place to store a flashlight. A dark cellar. The only way I was going to find anything down there was to feel around. I pushed the lever and heard the grating of metal, but nothing appeared to happen. No. 
I lifted the trap door and an overpowering smell of stale beer rose from the cellar below. I looked down on a stone tiled floor, way too far to jump. Excuse me. There was a nasty feeling in my guts I usually associated with light opera. It was Khan. What's the problem? Did you see what happened here a few minutes ago? What was that? A man was involved in an unfortunate accident. I didn't see anything. What about the boy? Well, he doesn't know anything either. The kid, well, you know how it is in these rural communities. Not enough genes to go around. I prayed McGuire had the sense to keep his mouth shut. Was the guy hurt bad? He's been taken care of, but he thinks he dropped a small parcel. You didn't happen to find it, did you? If I had, I would have taken it to the police. Of course. Thank you. The drain was covered with an iron grating, through which I could hear the rush and surge of running water. I took hold of the grating and pulled hard, but it didn't move. I tried to use the keys to lever up the grating, but that wasn't going to happen. Then I noticed a flash of light, something sparkling beneath the open trap door. It was Pegram's gem, all right. A large, uncut blue stone. As I held it aloft, I realized the fascination it could command. I guess I was already under its spell. Did you find it? What? Whatever you was looking for. Uh, yeah. Listen, McGuire, I want you to keep this to yourself. No problemo. Just chuck us up a crate of lager. No way. You're not old enough. We can sell it and make some cash. Forget it, kid. I couldn't betray Mr. Leary's trust. I could, for sure. That old misery guts deserves it. If you want to do me a favor, keep a lookout for that guy in the suit. Okay, but it'll cost you a pack of chips. Oh, and shout if you see that Ferrari. It was a couple of paper sacks filled with trash. I searched the trash, but there was nothing useful there. It was a bunch of cleaning materials. I looked among the cleaning materials, but saw nothing I could use. It was a bunch of cleaning. It was a rusty faucet. The faucet creaked, coughed, and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. I shut off the faucet as tight as I could, but it kept on dripping. It was a calendar with a faded photograph of a prize-winning carp. Excuse me. Yes, sir? I found your flashlight. So I see it. You'd better keep hold of that until you fix the pumps. No. Thanks.
Hi. Do you speak English? Well, no. Uh, what if I was to say no? An implication of cognizance shrouded in denial. A pretty poser of a paradox indeed. I gave him the look I'd perfected when I was 12 and was going to be the greatest hypnotist of all time. It was a killer. Are you attempting to hypnotize me, or is it the constipation you're suffering? I was a little out of practice. Have you seen Professor Pegram? No, he's packed up and gone. Do you happen to know where? Back in England, I suppose. Do you think Pegram's disappearance is due to the curse? Look at the facts. He dug up the gem. He disappeared. Bingo. It doesn't take a degree in mathematics to work that one out, does it? You don't have to be a smarty Pythagoras with a calculator. I guess not. Pegram has run off with the gem. Did you happen to see a red sports car down on the road? I caught a glimpse of a flash of red on the hill and heard the racket. Sure, it was an awful noise. A sports car, you say? A Ferrari, to be exact. A racing car? And what was it doing here? The poor fella must have been lost. The driver of the Ferrari was involved in an accident. Is that so? Yeah. He knocked somebody down outside the bar. What an idiot! How could a thing like that happen? He was traveling too fast. So fast, he ran right under the car. I mean, the car was traveling too fast. But you'd have thought the idiot could have heard it coming. Maybe you know the guy who was hit by the Ferrari. His name is Sean Fitzgerald. Oh, I know him all right. That's me nephew, the idiot responsible for the stacking of my hay cart. Was he killed by the car? Oh, no. But he has been abducted. Well, that's a relief now. Aren't you going to look for your nephew? What for? From what you say, it's too late. Well, you could report the matter to the police. Better not. Besides, what could they do? Well, they could mount a search. They have only the one bicycle between them. In a question of superior acceleration, I put me money on the Ferrari. I think you ought to know exactly what Sean has gotten himself into. I'm not sure I want to know. But you're his uncle. His own flesh and blood. You're right, but what can I do? If I'm not here to guard it, some idiot might try to climb the haystack. What a moral dilemma. Stay here and guard this potentially lethal agricultural construction, or to go off in search of the prodigal nephew, the very man responsible for said hazard? It'll need some thinking about. Why, there's no problem. You're right. Why didn't I think of it before? We'll demolish the haystack. You don't have to demolish the haystack to go look for Sean. I'll stay here in your place and warn anyone who's silly enough to climb it. Marvelous! I think I should start me inquiries in the bar. He strode off in the direction of McDevitt's bar, leaving me to contemplate the stack of hay. The stack of hay stopped short of the top of the wall. Even if I stretched as far as I could, the wall was out of reach. What I needed was a slice or two of Alice's Wonderland. Above my head was a gap in the wall where the massive stones had fallen away. There was a narrow crack between two of the stones where the centuries-old mortar had crumbled away. I inserted the end of the lifting key in the mortarless crack and gave it a firm shove. It remained lodged in the wall, jutting out to form a step. It 
was the fiercest, meanest looking old goat I'd ever laid eyes upon. Hey, Billy. The animal fixed on me with an evil glare. Behind the malice and resentment, there was a cool intelligence. How you doing, boy? I felt as threatened as I'd been by the assassin and his goons in Paris. It was a rusted piece of iron, maybe part of a plow or something. The rope by which the goat was tethered had become tangled on the old plowshare. Hey, Billy. The goat responded with a cool and penetrating stare. Behind the altar was a carved panel decorated with animals, birds, and plants. There was a pattern of five holes arranged on the wall. They'd been drilled there deliberately. I placed my fingers and thumb into the holes in the wall. Nothing happened. As I dipped my fingers into the soft white powder, I realized what it was. Plaster of Paris. I'd used it in kindergarten to make casts of animal paw prints. I reached into the sack, but it was empty. I tried in vain to move the panel. It was a statue which had fallen from its place on the wall. Five fingers of stone projected from the back of the carving. The statue was too heavy to lift. It overbalanced into the sand. As I swung the stone upright, I noticed it had left a pattern of holes in the sand.
I sprinkled the plaster on the sand until the holes were filled. The faucet creaked, coughed, and spewed out a stream of rusty colored water. I held the towel under the faucet and soaked it with water. I shut off the faucet as tight The trickle of water was quickly absorbed by the plaster. A lump of hardened plaster lay on the sand at my feet. The plaster cast was a pretty neat replica of the back of the stone, complete with protruding fingers. I eased the solid piece of plaster from the sand. Underneath, it had formed a perfect copy of the statue. The hardened plaster cast fitted snugly into the five matching sockets. There was a soft thud, then silence. So, where did you stay last night? At McDevitt's. I got to drinking with Doyle and a couple of the guys. That explains why you look so ill today. Did you get any sleep at all? Not much. 
I had to share the room with another guy. Did he snow? Hardly. He was dead. And you say Pigram has disappeared? Without a trace. But my visit wasn't a complete waste of time. Pigram's gem? The Templar's gem. Whoever Jacques Marquet is, he's in for a disappointment. Jacques Marquet? He's the guy who should have collected the gem from Fitzgerald. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. Do you want to look after the gem? No, Georges. I'd be too tempted to sell it. Look, Nico, a handful of plaster. Yeah. Why is it that men never really grow up? What's your problem, sister? Your pockets stuffed with useless junk like little boys. You never know when useless junk might come in handy. This is the tool I used to get into the sewers. Yes, you showed me before. Let's take another look at the manuscript. That's the gem that Pegram found in Loch Marne. The night scroll bears a phrase in Latin. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. That's the tripod in the Croon Museum. I can't sit here all day, much as I'd like to. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobino at the Kron Museum. And why don't you see if Rosso has heard anything? Okay. Anything else I can do for you while I'm out? Shopping, a trip to the laundromat? Just take care of yourself. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. What do you make of this gem? Very nice, chérie. A present for your girlfriend? She's not my girlfriend. Nonsense. You and her were made for each other. Does this powder mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Excuse me. Ah, Monsieur Stobart, n'est-ce pas? That's correct. You remember me. The retention of such data is part of my duty as a gendarme. That is our crime is fought through attention to detail, not intuition. Yes, yeah, sure. I'd like to report an assault. Yes, Monsieur. Where is the victim? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their names are Flap and Guido. Bon. I'll get them this time. What are you going to do about Flap and Guido, Sergeant? I'm going to bust them, monsieur. For years I have been hoping to pin something on that pair. Now's my chance. I'll show them, and the inspector. Thanks, Sergeant. Thanks for taking me seriously. I'm only doing my duty, Monsieur. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty-looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, Monsieur. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe 
Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Momart. I have he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic in the Avenue des Hérissons. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the Mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. Does this matchbook mean anything to you, Sergeant? That's a double-line Swedish with a crosshatch Bergman strike strip. Now, that's unusual. Pre-war Anderson hinging. Really? I haven't seen a reinforced Anderson outside of a private collection. It's rare, then? In this part of the world, yes. There are only three places these are made. Taiwan, Manila, and Slough. Does the name Merlin mean anything to you, Sergeant? Nothing, Monsieur. Does this matchbook mean anything to you, Sergeant? That's a double line. Now, that... Really? I haven't seen a real... It's... In this part of... There are only... Is Rosso here? Yes, he is. You wish to speak to him? Yes, I do. One moment, Monsieur. Stobart is here to see you, Monsieur. Did he say what it was about? No, Monsieur. Very well. Hi, Inspector. Remember me? But of course, Mr. Stobard. My mind is a well-ordered faculty. A mental classification system that's the envy of the Bibliothèque Nationale. No tricks, mark you, monsieur. Just exercise. Just as our muscles waste through inactivity, so our minds decay. But there is no need. If only people would learn to exercise their wits daily. If he was trying to impress me, it worked. He was pompous and patronizing, but he had style. Eh bien, if you called about the bombing, you're too late. Investigations have been closed. But... I've been taken off the case. What about the murder, the dead guy? It is out of my hands. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No. It's the face of a killer. The man who bombed the cafe? The photograph was taken soon after the explosion. He'd escaped through the sewers, leaving a trail of clues behind him. Circumstantial evidence, Stobard. None of it proves a thing. Don't you want to know what I found out about the killer? I told you, monsieur, the case is closed. I have washed my hands of the whole affair. Then I'll have to continue my investigations without your help. No. You must forget the business of the clown completely. Go back to being an ordinary tourist, Stobard. Did you find out the ID of the guy who was killed in the explosion? I already knew who he was. I heard that the bomb victim's name was Plantow. Your sources are reliable. He was a big shot of the Treasury, wasn't he? Maybe that's why you've been taken off the case. I'm sorry, monsieur. I cannot comment. Do you know a pair of thugs called Flap and Guido? I have known those two since they graduated from special school. Flap is a nasty piece of work, but Guido is the real brains of the partnership. Where did you hear of them? I met them out front of the Hotel Ubu. What was that psycho detective business you did in the cafe? It is my theory that the passions evoked in violent crimes create ripples in the ether. Invisible to all but the possessor of a highly developed and receptive mind. I'm impressed. Can you bend spoons, too? I didn't think a man of your obvious intelligence would stoop to mockery. I'm not mocking. I've had personal experience of the power of the mind. 
I used to get ignored at parties until I read a book that changed my life. Really? What was it called? Hypnotism for fun and profit. He looked at me as if I'd farted at a funeral. The power of mesmerism is a rare gift, not a party trick. You're not going to try any of that psychic interrogation on me, are you? Do you find the thought of my probing distasteful? Let's just say I'd rather you didn't. I've got more doubts than doubting Thomas when it comes to mysticism. Too bad. I think you would make an interesting subject under controlled regression. The day I let anyone mess with my mind hasn't dawned yet. Have you heard of Professor Pegram, the archaeologist? Molly Pegram? The second son of Lord Barclay Pegram? I don't know. I only read about him in a magazine. So much for the efficacy of rehabilitation. What has he done this time? He made an important archaeological find in Ireland. Do you know Pegram well? I have connections with the family, but I wouldn't say I knew him at all. Is his name really Molly? Of course not. That was the nickname he was given at school. All his friends and acquaintances know him as Molly. Ever heard of a guy called Marquet? Jacques Marquet? Marquet? I know the name well. He has a record for suspected blackmail, kidnapping, arson, and art theft. An all-rounder, huh? How come he's on the loose? His bravado is matched only by the courtroom skills of his attorney. So long, Inspector. to retain some of its original grandeur, but the modern additions look like a baseball cap on a statue of a medieval saint. The young man's face was full of eagerness and enthusiasm. I figured he was fresh from college. The woman managed to look overworked and hassled, though she didn't appear to be doing anything. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Pleased to meet you, sir. Call me George if you like. Are you sure? Yeah, that's my name. My name's Benoit, but everyone calls me Benny. Bunny? That's right, I used to have this cute habit when I was a kid. Uh, keep it to yourself, Benoit. Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? Uh, no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. What does this tool suggest to you? Isn't that used to snap the patient's ribs when exploring the abdomen? I hope not. What does this tool suggest to you? Isn't that used to... I hope not. See you later. Right. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plans. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. He comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see.
Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from a zoo. I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? No, I'm conducting a private investigation. Then I can't help you. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. Hi, my name's George Stobart. Really? If you wish to make an appointment, see the receptionist. I'm looking for a guy named Jacques Marquet. In which department does he work? He doesn't. He's a patient. I see. You do realize there are strict policies regarding visiting hours, don't you? This is important. I have to talk to Marquet urgently. We make no exceptions to the rules. It's a matter of life and death. The railroad running of this hospital is a matter of life and death. That's why we have rules. Does this tool mean anything to you? Sacre bleu! That's exactly what I needed in my last operation. It is? I had to improvise with a knitting needle and a couple of corks. If only you had been on hand at the time. My patient would have given his right arm for it. Does this tool mean anything? Yes, I really must get one like it myself. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, sir, I do not. Does this white powder mean anything to you? No, sir, I do not pretend to know the pharmacist's job. Have you ever heard of the Club Alamut? No, sir, I have not. Thanks for your help. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet's been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B-12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh dear, he's on Ward J-2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movement, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. What does this tool suggest to you? Is it a crack detector? Huh? Polar explorers use them to poke about in the snow. Ah, uh, no. What does this tool suggest to you? Is it a crack detector? Huh? Polar expl- Ah. Uh. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. Oh, you mean she's been here a long time? No. I mean there's not a man in this clinic who hasn't sprawled out on her. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? Down the corridor on the left, turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bear left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck.
Is this plaster any use to you? I'm allergic to plaster. Have you seen this man here at the clinic? No, sir. And I never forget a face. What does this false nose remind you of? Oh, it's a clown's nose. That's right. Why don't you give me a break and go and play with someone else? I'd like to shake you by the hand. Don't be fresh, young man. Have you heard of the Club Alamut? No. It sounds romantic, doesn't it? The kind of place where you get little umbrellas and whelks. Huh? That's romantic? Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. He looked blissfully happy for no apparent reason. Hello. What's that? I said, hello. Oh, hiya. are you? I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. It's a deal. Do you know a nurse called Grendel? Sure I do. Is she on duty today? Yeah, end of the corridor, Ward J2. Would this tool be any use to you? No, sir. Mr. Shiny has no user serviceable parts. Whatever that means. Would this tool be any use? No, sir. Whatever that means. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years and he's never let me down once. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh. Yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? No, I, uh... I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull-through. Whatever you've got with this metal mop foot is probably a fine and noble thing. It is? Say, it's not every day I meet someone as crazy as me. See you later. Yeah, take care now. Maybe the face of the unaccountably happy domestic had made me unduly suspicious. I mean, I knew it was only my imagination, but the water tasted, well, peculiar. Maybe the face of the unaccountably happy domestic and I mean, I knew it was only my... Oh, oui, monsieur? Is this Ward J2? It is, but uh, you're not supposed to be here. We have strict rules about visiting hours. Can't you make an exception? I've come all the way from California. You must speak to the doctor. I can't wait that long. What if he snuffs it? You can't talk like that here. This is a hospital. You will have to leave. Does this tool mean anything to you? 
I don't recognize it. Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. You can tell me how my brother is, can't you? Of course, monsieur. Uh, what is his name? Jacques Marquet. Let me see. He's satisfactory. I was told he was dying. Oh, well, he is, but the doctor described his condition as satisfactory. That's quite an improvement on yesterday. Do you know Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No, I don't. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I don't. Thank you, nurse. You may come back at visiting time, monsieur. Thanks. Uh, when is that? The second Tuesday of each month. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? Dr. Stobart at your service. Hey now, you can't go in there. How come? I'm responsible for the contents of that cupboard. Hey, Benoit! There's no need to shout. What do you want? Do you know the nurse on Ward J2? No, monsieur. This is my first day here. I can't wait to get my hands dirty. I was talking about treating my first patient, of course. I didn't mean I'd get my hands dirty with a nurse. See you later. Right. Excuse me, sir. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bernie, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? Do your own babysitting, Gramps. Who do you think you are, anyhow? I am Felix Hagenmeyer. And may I say what an honor it is to meet you in person, sir. You are on my medical wall of fame. Right up there with Pasteur and Leary. I look on it as a privilege, no, an honor, to look after your nephew, sir. He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. I'll bet. Show him around. Let him see some real suffering. So long, Hagenmeyer. Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, hi. Is this Ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Uh, thank you, Nurse. 
Well, who's first? Monsieur Croquet in bed too. What's his problem? He's been complaining of loss of consciousness. You'll need this, doctor. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dr. Stobart. <laughs> Hello, Doctor. The nurse told me you keep losing consciousness. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I've had the problem as long as I can remember. It's a real out-of-body experience. <laughs> like death, but not so conclusive. I see. How long does it last? Just a fraction of a second, <laughs> and then I recover. I might not have been a doctor, but I was formulating a diagnosis all the same. This guy was nuts. I know exactly what you mean. It's known in the medical field as blinking. Is it serious? Of course it isn't serious. It's perfectly natural. B but just think, two seconds every minute? Why, <laughs> that's almost half an hour every day. Two weeks out of every year spent in total darkness. I don't have time to listen to this baloney. Well, goodbye and good luck. Thanks, Doc. Doctor. What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. I'll come back later. Hey, Benoit. There's no need to shout. What do you want? Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. What do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I think of something. Are you ready with that pressure gauge? Primed and ready to pump, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Use it on Eric Sopmarsh. Okay. Rather you than me, pal. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lachmar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh, I thought you were one of the Ashash. <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you will sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You, you could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grandmaster quickly. Tell him that I have found it. Tripod. <laughs> right here in Paris. Will you have it? Not yet. But it's being taken care of. I. I am a couple of stooges with a flair for.
Betty Crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You? No, sir. We've met. What about the Hashashin? Uh, uh, is more likely uh, to uh, have followed Klausner. He'll stop at nothing to prevent the reforging of the sword. And that's bad, is it? As for Klausner, uh, uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he uh, has a theory about the location of the... Uh, uh. That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Ah, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What's that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Breil. There's no Dr. Breil working here. He's an imposter. The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Don't remind me. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one, Rosso or Sergeant Mou? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. You have left it very late, monsieur. Late for what? Anything. I am closing the museum soon. You wouldn't like to get locked in. I can tell you, not in this gallery. Why not? It is haunted, monsieur. You don't believe in ghosts, surely. Oh, yes, I do. 
Seven years ago, a lad managed to hide in here. He'd made a bet with his friends, I suppose. When I found him in the morning, he was cold as ice and stiff as a bud. Well, what was the cause of death? They said it was a brain tumor. But on his face was a look of stark, desperate terror such as I have never seen before. Scary. Forget it. I beg your pardon, are you André Lobineau? That's me? You want my autograph? No, I was told you may be able to help me. Help? My name is George Stobart. I'd like your professional opinion. Well, okay, shoot. What do you make of this tool? Interesting. Where did you get it? From a dig in Paris. Vraiment? I didn't realize there were any excavations in progress in this city. Did I show you this tool? Yes, you did, though I can't imagine why. Have you ever heard of the Hashashin? Why, yes, it was a radical Muslim sect whose name became synonymous with murder. It was formed in 11th century Persia, shortly before the Crusades. At roughly the same time as the Templars. Yes, they gave a new word to our language, Assassini, the Assassins. How did the Assassins get their name? From the legend surrounding the secrets of their initiation rites. A young man who sought to join the sect was given hashish until he drifted into dreams. He awoke to find himself in a fabulous garden with everything he could wish for. The freshest water, the most delicious food, the choicest hash, and the most delectable women imaginable. Cool. Do you have the address? I haven't finished the story. There was a price to pay for this taste of paradise. Wouldn't you just know it? The young man would wake the next day to find himself back in the real world. He was told that he'd been given a glimpse of the heaven reserved for holy martyrs. A heaven he would enjoy for eternity if he was willing to join the Hashashin. How did the assassins operate? Well, as I explained, the new recruits would be only too willing to die for the cause. They'd be instructed in the use of the dagger, poisons, and disguise. Then, the Grand Master of the sect would name an enemy of Allah. And they'd stop at nothing to eliminate that enemy. You got it. They were fearless and deadly. Does the cult of the assassin still exist? Take a look around at the world today. You tell me. Does the name Montfaucon mean anything to you? Sure, it was the most grisly spectacle in Paris until the revolution. A public toilet? Montfaucon was the place of execution for many thousands. A dark temple of death with row upon row of arches, each one framing a grim exhibit. Scores of rotting corpses swung on creaking rope while the crows devoured them. That explains the image of the hanged man. I found a reference to Montfaucon in Ireland, in a village called Lochmarn. Lochmarn? That's where Pigram was digging. That's right. He'd left the excavation before I arrived. Where was the site of Montfaucon? To the northeast, near the Canal Saint-Martin. But there's nothing there now. The old gibbet was torn down during the revolution. What can you tell me about Philippe Lebel? He was responsible for the extermination of the Knights Templar. I know that, but why was Philip so hot to get rid of them? Mostly because he wanted to get his hands on their treasure. He had an enormous debt and a lifelong war with England to fund. The trouble was the Templars were a highly respected holy order. If the Templars were so powerful, how did this Philippe dude wipe them out? By underhanded, dishonorable means, of course. The Pope was Clement V, a Frenchman. French, huh? 
Handy for Philippe? Fate had nothing to do with it. He was Philippe's puppet, planted to further his political ambitions. Philippe wanted the wealth of the Templars and used Clermont to get it. So what was Philippe's plan? What happened? Sealed orders were sent out all over France, not to be opened until the appointed day. That day was Friday, July 13th. That's the origin of our superstition regarding that date. At dawn, throughout the whole of France, the Templars were arrested. It was the biggest bust in the history of the world. What happened to the Templars after their arrest? Philippe was out for blood, so he handed the Templars over to the Inquisition. Not surprisingly, they confessed to a sensational and sordid list of blasphemies. Like what? Oh, the sort of things you read about in the gutter press. Devil worship, lewd sexual practices, <laughs> spitting on the Holy Cross, that kind of thing. Well, that must have given their lawyers some headaches. Whether or not the accusations were true, this was not good publicity. Most of the charges were probably cooked up, but so were the Templars, literally. Hundreds of them were found guilty of heresy and flamed grilled at the stake. They died protesting their innocence. But surely Philippe had no proof of his charges against the Templars. A man will admit anything under torture. The Inquisition fabricated some nonsensical demon called Baphomet and then suggested to their victims that this was what they worshipped. But they didn't have to agree. The record show a Templar coming to trial with both feet burnt off. Fragments of flesh and charred bone falling from the stamps. What would you not admit to to stop such torment? So there was no truth at all in the Baphomet accusations? Not a shred. Almost every victim described the idol differently. No, Baphomet never existed outside the sick minds of the Inquisitors. So Philippe stole the Templars' riches, huh? Oh no, they weren't stupid. The King's troops marched first on the temple in Paris then to the Templar home port at La Rochelle. There was no trace of the treasure, and the fleet of the Knights Templar had set sail. I'd like your opinion on a medieval manuscript. Vraiment, do you have it with you? No, it's too fragile. And besides, there are certain people who'd stop at nothing to get their hands on it. Intriguing. Uh, do you have a copy of the text? There isn't much. Only a few Latin phrases. I was kind of hoping you'd help decipher the pictures. Without seeing the manuscript, uh, that's a tall order. Just tell me one thing. What does the image of two men riding on the same horse suggest to you? The Knights Templar. Does the Templar seal appear on this manuscript? I'd love to see that for myself. The manuscript is being looked after by a friend. In Paris? Yeah. Not far from here, in fact. Well, uh, just give me the address and I'll uh, come round and take a look. I'm not so sure about that. Maybe I should check with her first. A female friend? Yeah, she's a woman. Maybe it was my imagination, but I noticed a predatory look in his eye. Suddenly, this friendly historian had turned into the big bad wolf. This friend who has the manuscript? Ah, uh, oui, uh, the anonymous girlfriend. She lives at 361 Rue Jarry. Ah, I know it well. I'll drop by just as soon as I can. Can you tell me anything about the Knights Templar? I sure can, Georgie. Soldiers, diplomats, mercenaries, monks, bankers, you name it, the Templars fit the bill. The greatest fighting force in Christendom, the Militia of Christ. Jeez. How did the Templars get their name? From the building in which they set up their headquarters. The King of Jerusalem gave them part of a mosque on the Temple Mount. 
It was said to have been the site of the original Temple of Solomon. The other became known first as the Knights of the Temple and later as the Knights Templar. You're a mine of information, André. Glad to be of help, Georgie. How come the Templars became so wealthy? There was a constant stream of new recruits to their ranks, many from noble families. They were required to swear a sacred oath of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So, their money, goods, and lands were donated to the order. The Templars soon held land in France, Scotland, England, Spain, most of Europe, in fact. The poor Knights of Christ became the wealthiest power in Christendom. Is it true the treasure of the Knights Templar was never found? Ah, who knows? So little knowledge of what really happened remains. Or oh, if it does, the truth has never been made public. What do you mean by that? The Templars have attained a mythological status, like the King Arthur of the Britons. There are people even now who say the Templars still exist. Do you think that's likely? No, not for a minute. I think you ought to know that the tripod is going to be stolen. The uh, Lochman tripod? No. It's true. I can give you a description of the thieves. Before the supposed event has taken place? I heard them planning the raid. They're wasting their time. The tripod is protected by a state-of-the-art alarm system. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. Why don't you loan the tripod to me for safekeeping? Because I'd never see it again. Well, don't you trust me? It's not a question of trust, George. That tripod is hundreds of years old and extremely fragile. I get your point. Do you know Pegram well? Not really. I met him at a conference. I would have liked to talk to him in depth, but I didn't have time. When was this? Oh, uh, back in the summer, uh, July, I think. The second week of July? Maybe. Yes, it was, uh, just before Bastille Day. So Pegram was in Paris at the same time as the other victims. Pardon? Victims of what? Uh, nothing. Uh, just thinking aloud. What do you make of this? It's the biggest gemstone I've ever seen. Where did you get it? From Professor Pegram's messenger boy. Did uh, Pegram find this on his dig? Yeah, the site where this was found was a Templar castle. Do you think it could be part of the Templar treasure? No, oh, I shouldn't think so. Does the guy in this photograph look familiar to you? No. Do you recognize this white powder, André? No. Do you have any use for this, André? I ah, shouldn't think so, Georgie. Take a look at this nose, Labino. It really doesn't interest me, Georgie. I'd like to shake you by the hand, André. Not now, Georgie. Thanks for your help, André. You're welcome. No, monsieur. Okay. No, monsieur. Okay. metal rod attached to the wall was connected to the window. Attention! Please do not open the window, monsieur. Don't you think it's kind of stuffy in here? Better stuffy than dead. What's the problem? Fumes from car exhausts? Not just that, monsieur. There's a new bag of bar opened up across the street. 
The laughing buffalo. So what's the problem? They cook their burgers on a charcoal grill, and the fat falls on the open flame. The amount of organic compound and smoke particles released is astounding. Since they opened, local air pollution has doubled, and it stinks like a funeral pyre. That is why I keep the windows closed. Don't open it. Remember the burning cattle. The rod turned smoothly and the window above me opened. It is closing time, Monsieur Lobino. Already, there are just aren't enough hours in the day. More than enough for me. I can't wait to get home and put my feet up. Eh bien, see you tomorrow. Good night, Monsieur. Hey, Guido! Look at this! Quit fooling around, you moron! Get your ass over here and bring that flashlight! What the... Who's there? Let's get out of here! And when I woke up, I was at the police station. Luckily, I managed to persuade Rosso I was innocent. Poor George. What a mess. I bungled the whole thing. I don't think so. You made a pretty good job of distracting those two crooks. Yeah, but the killer got away with the tripod. No, he didn't. He's not the only one who can dress up in costume. You mean... It was you who stole the tripod? Oh, hell, Nico. I could have been shot. Those dogs are more likely to shoot their own feet. I just wish you'd told me your plans. We're supposed to be in this together. And how come you dressed up like a pantomime cat? Don't suck, Georgie, please. Oh, rats. And don't call me Georgie. Oh, I really thought you'd be pleased. After all, we've got the tripod. Aren't you going to try putting the gem on the tripod? I guess so. Nothing happened. Yeah. The gem fits perfectly, but what does that prove? Maybe the tripod has to be in a certain location. There's nothing on the manuscript to indicate where, though, is there? Oh, by the way, I had a visit from André Lobineau. Oh, yeah. I hope you didn't mind me giving him your address. Not at all. 
It was lovely to see him again. He was over the moon when I showed him the manuscript. It's not often he gets that excited. He made a sketch of the knight's crest to take back to the museum. I believe he's identified the family who bear that crest. I sure hope so. Labino explained who the Hashashin were. Yeah? The cult of the assassins. Oh, boy! Have you found out any more about the Knights Templar? Yes, I have. The guy responsible for the downfall was Philippe IV, the King of France, otherwise known as Philippe le Bel. I've heard of him. Well, he is known to history as Philippe de Fer, but I doubt if the Templars called him that. I'm sure André will tell you all about him. Let's take another look at the manuscript. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. Between them is a gem supported by a tripod. There's a guy working on a loom. The night scroll bears a phrase in Latin. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. That's the tripod we borrowed from the museum. That's the gem that Pegram found in Loch Marne. Let's take an... Can you think of any use for this? That's a thing for measuring blood pressure, isn't it? What are you doing with that? I picked it up in the hospital. It could be useful. You ought to take it back. Don't you feel guilty? Uh, no. What do you think the purpose of this tripod is? On the manuscript, the gem is shown mounted on top of it. So, we risked a criminal charge to steal a display stand? Don't ask me. Maybe it's intended to hold the gem in a specific position. I have to go. Already? You only just arrived. Time and tide wait for no man. Okay, I'll see you later. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Have you seen anyone out here watching Mademoiselle Collard's apartment? Yes, I have. A strange man, tall and thin as a broomstick. He kept his face hidden, but I saw his eyes peering from evil little slits. How was he dressed? A long brown raincoat with a hat. Or like Humphrey Bogart? Yes, but he didn't have Bogart's charisma. Besides, this guy looked like he needed a toilet. You never saw Bogart clenching his buttocks like that. What does this apparatus mean to you? The last time I saw one of those, I was about to go to the operating theater. The doctor told me there was nothing to worry about. I laughed in his face. How come? I can see the future, remember? Do you know what this tripod was used for? I couldn't imagine. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will.
I once read a list of low-stress jobs. It didn't include police work. Obviously, this guy hadn't read the same list. Excuse me, officer. And how may I help you? What do you know about the Knights Templar? Les Templiers. Only that they were excommunicated in 1312 and hanged in their dozens within this very square. Boy, what they teach in the police academy these days. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. Shouldn't you be off directing traffic or something? You have seen the Parisian traffic, no? Yeah, so? I could direct the traffic, the most dangerous, the east side of Rome. Or I can sit here and enjoy the sun, the architecture, and the so-so Sauvignon. Which would you choose? Yeah, but I'm not a policeman. What happened to duty? An excellent question, monsieur. Do you know what this is? It's a sewer key. Does it mean anything to you? Do you belong to some obscure arm of the Masons? Do you know what this is? It's a sewer key. Does it mean... Do you... Have you seen this man before? No. Who is it? I believe him to be an international assassin. Oh. Is that all you can say? Oh. I did wonder if I should say that I believe you to be an international paranoiac. But it didn't seem polite. Does this red nose mean anything to you? Aha! A prosthetic nose. Very significant. It is? No. I am just having a little joke. <laughs> I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. I'll be there. The juggler was good. Why he couldn't put that kind of application into getting a real job, I had no idea. Maybe he just liked dressing up like a horse's ass. Hey, you with the balls. We. Oui? What do you know about the Knights Templar? Le Templier? Ah, the last Grandmaster, Jacques Dumoulin, was burnt on an island in the Seine in 1314. Wow. You're pretty well educated for a juggler. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. How did you learn to be a juggler? Juggler? What is this juggler? It's you. You juggle, that makes you a juggler. No! I am a jongleur. A jongleur? What's that? Mon dieu! A jongleur is an artist a master of the contragravitic aeroballetic mysteries. In centuries past, the courts of the crown heads of Europe had the jongleurs, witty erudite men to whom the monarchs turned in their hours of need. <laughs> wait a minute, wait. A minute. Let me get this straight. Our enemies are at the borders, plague ravages the land, and the peasants are revolting. Thank God we've got Chuckles the jongler to throw his balls around. I don't think so. That juggling doesn't look so difficult. Oh, it does not, does it not? Perhaps you feel you could do better, no? I'll give it a try. Be my guest. I had no idea what I was doing. But this guy was obviously an idiot, so how difficult could it be? A lot more difficult than I thought. That's how difficult. Still, it was my big chance to be derided by complete strangers. Not so easy after all, is it? No, I guess not. Look, a red nose. Ah, you are a clown. A clown? No, if so, you would be a much better jongleur. 
For a moment, an idea capered around near the spotlight of my attention, but fell down the pothole of abstraction before I could focus on it. This gadget is a sewer key. I do not want it, thank you. Well, I'm not selling it, I just wanted your opinion. It is hardly my area of expertise. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Hello again, officer. Hello again, monsieur. What do you think of the juggler? Ah, he is excellent, most watchable. But he's blocking the thoroughfare and obstructing traffic. So? He is amusing. The traffic isn't. If he wants to block it, who am I to say no? You're a cop. Ah, oui. So I am. Ah, well. So you're not going to do anything about this guy? No. He probably doesn't even have a license. Ah, a license. This I had not considered. So what are you going to do? The instant I return to the station, I shall check. Return to the station? Why not just ask him? And spoil his concentration? What kind of a barbarian do you take me for? Ah, you are a clown. Do I look like a clown? No, although you juggle like one. Now, if I'd known you were a clown, it would have been amusing. And not a humiliation for you. What do you mean? Who ever heard of a plain clothes clown? He had a point. So you're saying that if I juggle badly with a red nose, I'd be the king of comedy. But if I juggle badly without it... You look like a pathetic loon. Oui, monsieur. You have it. I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. I'll be there. Hi again. Oui? What is it this time? I'd like to have another try at juggling, please. You have gone on a crash course, perhaps? No. I just had an insight into presentation. Huh? Allow me to demonstrate. The balls, please. If you insist on completing your humiliation, monsieur. Okay, now for my secret weapon. The juggler was speechless with rage. You could have mistaken him for a mime. And without a word, he collected his balls... and left in a fury. Hey, you forgot one of your balls. Hey. But he didn't hear. Better still, deprived of his entertainment, the gendarme decided maybe he ought to do some policing for a change. In French, English, and German, it read, In 1312, Pope Clement V dissolved the knightly order of the Templars and excommunicated its members on charges of heresy. In the following two years, many of the knights were hanged on this site. Their Grand Master, Jacques de Molay, was burnt at the stake on an island in the Seine. waiting in prayer for the Judgment Day.
Biblical references engraved into the tomb edge to guide his way to the next world. I guess. The statue had any secrets. It was concealing them pretty well. I didn't recognize the biblical story in it. I was a Sunday school dropout. I couldn't open it with my bare hands. A weird little boat lay tied up. I guess they used it to get maintenance crews around. Either that or the Phantom of the Opera was somewhere near. The wall had flaked and anything once written on it had long since gone. The inscription was hard to read, but I made out Templier and something about innocence. Close up, I could see a faded inscription. My medieval French isn't much, but the few words I understood seemed to say, this is where the gallows used to stand. Maybe. That sounded pretty solid. Nothing hollow there. Hey, that's hollow. It was time for some brutal destruction. I'd poked a hole in an historical site. If any archaeologists came by, they'd lynch me for this. Close up, I could see the plaster was thinner where I'd broken through. And behind it were some cogs and a lever. Here goes. Hey, cool. Inside the hole, I could see one of the cogs had come loose and jammed the mechanism solid. Inside the hole, the hook was held rigidly by the tightly wound chain.
It would take a blacksmith or an engineer to do anything with that. In the beginning was the end. An end wrought by our enemies began our darkness. In the end will be a beginning. An end to our enemies heralds our new day. Report. The military establishments are in flux. The end of the Cold War has left them with no clear goal and as obvious targets for budgetary cuts. We have successfully promoted a sense of betrayal in the upper echelons. They feel that the politicians have cast them adrift. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Good, Mademoiselle. Governments are giving the corporations more respect than their own citizens. A groundswell of dissatisfaction and dissidence is growing. The corporations are becoming too large and complex for their own executives to control them. A blind belief in market forces is accelerating this trend the world over. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. The global population's belief in those that govern it has never been lower. We have inculcated a sense of immediacy and action over forethought and planning in all the major governments. They are acting on hasty decisions that cannot be completed or revoked without appearing foolish. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Excellent. The tired old governments are dying a slow death from their own incompetence and our machinations. The millennium is almost upon us and everything is in place for the rise of our new order. Almost. Professor, where is the broken sword? Oh, as we discussed last time, the loss of the manuscript are such is as a corollary hindered. And as discussed last time, you have been furnished with a dramatically increased budget. What have you been doing with our money, Professor? We are working on the principle that the Templars... <clears throat> that is to say, our predecessors... Hold on. These are the Templars? must have left a trail when they were hiding the clues to the sort of the Fomet's location. I have a small army of historians and archaeologists ferreting out that trail. I trust these historians and archaeologists are more trustworthy than your friend Pigram. Pigram was loyal. He tried to protect the Lokmarn gem when the Hashashin came near. And failed. And don't call that Syrian maniac the Hashashin. He's an assassin. Plain and simple. That's not what he believes. He actually thinks. Silence! Do I have to remind you that we have a sacred duty? A trust? When Philippe attempted to destroy the Order, we lost the sword and our power with it. Now, we have the opportunity to reforge it. But time is short. We need results. Not petty bickering. Not excuses. Now, Professor Baphomet. Yes, of course, my apologies. We will find Baphomet and the sword, manuscript or no. We have already found another element actually within Paris. Excellent. What is it? Well, we're not exactly sure at present. Ha! But I have my best people working on it. You would do well not to criticize others, Eklund. At least I have not murdered one of our own. Of course. 
That guy was the bogus doctor in the hospital. Marquet was a liability. Eklund dealt with him on my orders. I beg your pardon, Grand Master. I did not mean to. Have you any good news for us, Professor? We already know three of the elements. We know that Klausner had obtained the lens before he vanished. Where was he? Syria. We know that he arrived, but after that, nothing. The assassin. I fear so. It's a shame. Klausner was a good operative. This will be our last meeting in person until we locate the sort of Baphomet. I hope that I don't need to emphasize the importance of finding it. Without it, our endeavors come to nothing. With the sword reforged, we will have the power to sweep the stage of all opposition. The new millennium will belong to us. The next time that we meet, it will be to become the princess of this world! In the middle of the circle was a stump of stone, a shaft of daylight from the world above lancing down to touch it. I noticed three small notches around the edge of the stump's top. There was a large circle marked out on the floor with a stump in the middle. Around the circle, I could see words inlaid into the stone. The light falling from above struck the gem and scattered in five neat rays, and each ray picked out a letter. Starting from the seal, I could read M-A-R-I-B, Marib. Now all I had to do was figure out what the heck that meant. Nico, I've seen them. Who? The Templars. I spied on their meeting in the catacombs. And you saw the Knight Templar? I saw a bunch of guys masquerading as Templars. They're after something called the Sword of Baphomet. The bogus doctor was there, the guy who killed Marquet. The manuscript is the key, just as we thought. It shows the way to the broken sword, whatever that is. And how does the assassin fit into all this? He's out to stop them. These Neo-Templars, they're men and women in influential positions. Don't you see? Plantar was one of them. The assassin killed him for the manuscript to stop them finding the sword. But now we have got the manuscript. Yes. So how do they hope to find the sword? I don't know. They said something about a lens and a guy called Klausner who's gone to Syria. But they didn't seem to realize the significance of the very site of their meeting. You see, after they'd gone, I discovered a stone pedestal and a carved inscription. I set up the gem on the tripod, directly below a beam of light. The gem split the beam and lit the letters M-A-R.
R I B. Marib is a village in Syria. Then the Neo Templars are ahead of us. Klausner beat me to it. You're not thinking of going there yourself, are you? Why not? These guys are crazy and dangerous. That reminds me, you should leave the gem here. Okay. What about the tripod? I'll send it back to Andre anonymously. Would you like this juggling ball? Have you been drinking, Georges? No, why? Because you're talking crap. Do you think I should go to Marib? Syria is a long way, Georges. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. What do you think of my ball? I'm picking up vibrations from it. That ball will travel far. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Excuse me. Not so fast. I'd like your personal details, please. Huh? What for? In the event of an accident. It would help us to know where to send the body. Look, is this really necessary? I came in here to talk to Rosso. Ah, uh, why did you not say? <coughs> Where's Sergeant Moo? Sergeant Moo? You haven't heard? Heard what? Has something happened to him? Moo. He's dead. You're kidding. No, monsieur. That's... How? Why? The death of a policeman never comes as a surprise, but always as a shock. But Sergeant Moo? He was so... I know. I know. He was as flexible as a riot baton. Yet his heart was as warm as a freshly extracted urine sample. Have you had any reports concerning a suspicious clown? Why, yes. There was a fracas only this morning. Three arrests for public disorder. And you say there was a clown involved? A clown and a particularly offensive piece of sculpture with balloons. Are you in any way involved with the reprobate, monsieur? No, not me. What do you make of this? It's a juggler's ball. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur, I do not. I have no memory for faces. Have you any idea what this tool is used for? Oui, monsieur. It is a dip stick. Have you any idea what... Oui, monsieur. Do you know what this powder is? It looks like plaster, monsieur. May I see Inspector Rosso? I'm sorry, but he gave me orders not to disturb him, monsieur. Do you know anything about Rosso's psychic techniques? I cannot comment on my superior's methods. All I will say is that Inspector Rosso has an impressive record. He's a good detective? One of the best. He's a man of honor, with a fine sense of duty. You wouldn't say he was... <sighs> a screwball? Not to his face, monsieur. Do you know what this device is used for? Certainly, monsieur. It is for measuring the pressure of the blood. Thanks for your help, officer.
Hey there, young fella. Speak you the English? Speak you the Anglais? Uh, Parlez-vous Anglais? Yes, see, si, and indeed we, oui. and rather better than you by the sound of it. My name is Nijo. Welcome to my grand emporium of quality merchandise. Does the word Templar mean anything to you? Templar? Ah, Templar. <gasps> Templar! Why, yes, of course! It does? Yes! A splendid series of books by Mr. Leslie Chatteris, featuring the roguish Mr. Simon Templar. Great. That's a real help, Nijo. Anything else? The Saint television program featuring Mr. Roger Moore of the Quizzical Eyebrow and a stick man with a halo. Bing! So all Templar means to you is Roger Moore. I only watched it for the stick man with the halo. Bing! He was better animated. So, I'm correct in saying that the word Templar doesn't mean much to you. Well, there was the Order of Knights who were wiped out in an Inquisition in 1312, I suppose. That's them. What else do you know? Just how much information do you think there is on a Trivial Pursuit card? A what? From the medieval edition. We had it on the stand a couple of years ago. Ask me what a future is. Go on, I know all this stuff. Uh, never mind. Okay, forget about the Templars for a minute. What do you know about knights? Like the Crusaders, they came to the East on an insane and pointless mission. They sacrificed thousands of lives, including their own, for insensate pride. How anyone can find them romantic confounds me. So, this is your stand? Oh, yes, sir. Though stand does not begin to do it justice. The finest in this bustling metropolis. This is a bustling metropolis? Well, not per se, no. You speak very good English. Thank you, sir. I learned from tapes that my uncle procured. Oh, a language course. No, sir. Jeeves and Wooster, Gussie, Fink, Notto, Aunt Agatha, what ho! How much are those books there on the shelf? Have you any Syrian pounds? I think I might have a couple of Irish pun. Then they're too expensive for you, sir. What do you make of this? Hmm. A man-sized double-ply tissue stained with Bestheimer's number 12 white pancake grease paint, apparently. Here, shake hands, Nijo. I'd rather not, sir. At least not while you've got that shake and shock buzzer clumsily concealed in your palm. Oh, you noticed. Outlawed in three separate arms limitation conventions, those are. Hmm, I didn't have you down as a doctor. I'm not. I, uh, acquired it. I didn't have you down as a petty thief, either. I'm not. This plaster was very useful in Ireland. Really? Your fund of travelers' tales never ceases to enthrall me. What do you make of this? Well, beyond the obvious, very little. That pattern seems very familiar, though. Look at this. A lifting key as used by Parisian sewer workers. Kalu, Kalei, sir. I must remember this day for posterity. My grandchildren will be fascinated. Look at this. A Kalu. Do you know the name Merlin? I'm afraid not, old bee. Have you seen this man before? No, sir. I'm glad to say. Cold eyes. Oh, a comedian. No surprise there. What do you think of this, eh? 
Oh, sir, what a splendid plaything. One day, when I am rich, I am going to build a world-renowned collection of brightly colored balls. Are you serious? In deadly earnest, people will come from far and wide to see my... Yes? ...collection. The Rockefellers and the Gettys can keep their hordes of so-called fine art. But answer me this. What good is a Picasso, I ask you, if you cannot bounce it off a wall? You may have a point. Seriously, do you really think this thing's so great? Take it away, you tempter. I'll swap it for something off your stand. Um, due to seasonal financial considerations, I'm afraid I cannot. I thought you wanted this thing. I do, sir. This stand doesn't. Which in translation meant it's not really my stand, and I'll be in big trouble if I swap anything for something that I want myself. Alternatively, is there any service that you require? Not at the moment, but I'll bear it in mind. So long, Nijo. Toodle peep, sir. An old executive toy and a cheap plaster statuette. There didn't seem much helpful around here. The rifle looked dangerous to the user. There were some great bargains on the shelf, providing you ran a junk museum. The cat was an ugly brute who looked like he owned the joint. Ah, bad-tempered as well as ugly. Hello. I was wondering whether you could help me. Why, hi there, handsome. What can I do for you? Hi, my name's George. I was just... Well, it certainly is delightful to meet you, George. I was... My name's Mrs. Henderson, but you can call me Pearl, I'm sure. Okay, Pearl. I was... So nice to meet a friendly American face so far from home. Pearl? Yes, dear? I was just wondering if you could help me. Why, sure, precious. Do you know anything about medieval weaving? I do a little needlework, but... Gosh. It's okay. It was a long shot. Have you ever heard of a group of knights called the Templars? Sounds familiar. I remember. Dwayne had a book. The Holy Something and the Holy Something Else I can't quite recall. I read a little of it. And? Seemed like a lot of hooey to me. So, tell me a little about yourself, Pearl. Me? Oh, a gentleman's interest is always so flattering. Well, my husband and I run a greetings card company in a cute little place called Akron in Ohio. Akron? Cute? Little? Is your husband around, Pearl? Well, as a matter of fact, yes, he is. Sorry to disappoint you. Have you talked to the boy on the bric-a-brac stand? Oh, you've met him? His name's Nijo, you know. Oh, he's just so cute, I could die. I'd love to bundle him up and take him back to Ohio. He might not thank you. I'm looking for something ancient, you know. Something to impress the folks back home. The poor boy was trying to do his best, but we still haven't found anything. Do you know what this is? Lord, no. It looks painful, though. It's a sewer key. Who'd want to break into a sewer? Do you know what this is? Lord, no. It's a... Who'd want... I've got to go now, Pearl. It's been a pleasure, George. Don't be a stranger. Hi, uh, I was wondering whether you could help me. Why, sure, son. Always got time for a fellow American. The name's Henderson. Dwayne Henderson. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Henderson. Hell, boy. I'm not in the office. Call me Dwayne. Oh, okay. Dwayne? My name's George Stobart. 
Do you mind if I ask you an odd question? Okay, but I might not answer it. Do you know anything about the Templars? The Knights Templar? Yep. Nope. Nothing at all. Well, you knew they were an order of knights. What I know and what I say are two different things, boy. I haven't lasted as long as I have in this business without knowing that. In this business? Sure. The greetings card business. Oh, please. I saw a medieval picture of a woman, royalty or nobility, something like that. She was looking in a mirror, but the reflection was of a man with three faces. What do you think of that? I think you should be in therapy. You're a long way from home, Dwayne. Could say the same about you, George. Me? Well, I'm just sightseeing, that's all. Without a camera? Kinda lags to come all this way and not take pictures. Mind if I take a picture of you, George? What? Why? Ow! You could have warned me. You don't mind, do you, George? The folks back home will be real interested. What exactly do you do, Dwayne? Didn't I say? Oh, I run a greeting card company. Yep, we're based in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland? Pearl said you're in Akron. What was that? Uh, nothing, just thinking out loud. Pearl writes the poems for him. You ought to ask her to recite some. How long have you been married, Dwayne? Hell, must be uh, 30 years now. Have you talked to Nijo? Nijo? He's the youngster on that junk stand, right? Yeah, we've met him. He's a smart kid. Speaks four languages and he's never had a day's formal education. He should go far. Kept trying to peddle garbage on us, though. You're not gonna find much worthwhile around here. I know that, and you know that. But try telling Pearl. She reckons there's antiquities in them, Doris Dan. What do you make of this? A manhole lifting key, so? Hey, how come you recognize it? Hey, how come you're carrying it? Yeah, well, let's just drop the subject, shall we? Have I shown you this? Yep. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. Hi, what's your name, sir? Hello, hello, you bike kebab. Most cool. What do you make of this? Buy kebab, most good. What do you think of this? Buy kebab, come to the... Does this mean anything to you? No, no, you buy kebab. I'd value your opinion on this, sir. Nah, you buy kebab, none? What do you make of this, sir? You buy kebab, you buy kebab, yum. Most good. I'd value your opinion on this, sir. Nah, you buy kebab. None? What do you make of this, sir? You buy kebab. You buy kebab. Yum, most good. I'd value your opinion on this, sir. Nah, you buy kebab. None? What do you make of this, sir? You buy kebab. You buy I'd value your... Nah. Well, goodbye. Have a nice day. Most good. Hello again, Pearl. Why, hello, George. It's such a pleasure to see you again. You said that your company is based in Akron. And Dwayne said it's in Cleveland, no doubt. Well, yes, he did. Dwayne was in the Marines in Vietnam, you know. Anyway, he got a medical discharge. Thing is, he gets confused. We moved away from Cleveland five years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean... 
He also gets a little paranoid. Thinks he's a spy or something. I'm so sorry, Pearl. Don't worry yourself, George. We live with it. Does this matchbook mean anything to you? You're a feluminist. Don't they have secret handshakes? Oh, George, now you're teasing. Have you seen this man before? No. A friend of yours? No, not really. I've got to go now, Pearl. It's been a pleasure, George. Don't be a stranger. The carpet seller looked craftier than the offspring of a fox and an insurance agent. Hi. Hello, sir. Lovely carpet. Does this mean anything to you? Yes, yes. Carpet, yes. What do you think of this? Lovely carpets, yes! Does this matchbook mean anything to you? Ah! Give to me! Give to me! A la mut! Many beneficent greetings, my most fortunate possible friend. Huh? Do I know you, mister? No. No. And again I say, no. But, my friend, do you not see our mutual good fortune in this meeting? How frank do you want me to be? You are a traveler, yes? Boy, you must be the world's greatest detective. No. I am told that is Sherlock Holmes of the big forehead and slipper full of shag. I, as contrast, am world's greatest luxury taxi driver. I can see where this is going. I am Ultar, taxi driver and luxury guide per excellent. Yes. This I had to hear. Where does your heart desire to go? Simply mention the name to your obedient servant and we shall fly there, swift as the eagle. Oh, well, I don't really want to leave Marib yet, but I'm sure that if I do, you'll be the first to know. Is good. You know where you want to go, you come to Ultar. Thanks. See you around, Ultar. Be having a pleasant day, full of shining experiences and happiness, my friend. Hi. Nice club you've got here. I was wondering if you could help me. What? I mean, I beg your pardon? I'm sorry, but I don't understand. No surprise there, all righty. He says sorry, but he not speak English. Uh, but he didn't say anything. He not have tongue. No tongue? What happened? It was bet. Ah, and he lost. He won. You should see other chappy. Oh, yes. Hello again, Ultar. Great hellos, munificent foreigner and possible future client. Well, you never know. Would you mind talking to me? He's most agreeable. This is how Ultar learns such splendid English, yes? Yes. What do you know about the kebab seller? A most miserable man. Ultar say, cheer up, matey mate. It might never happen. And he say, shut up, Ultar. Fancy that. Not at all. 
Arto has face like the drizzle that falls on the midweek afternoon. Whatever that is. Do you know anything about the Templars? Of course. Yes? What can you tell me? Great Sheba band of the 60s. Uh, no, n that's not really... Who put the bop in the bop, 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 bop? Yeah, eternal questions. What do you make of that boy in the market, Nejo? Nejo? Ha! Ayub's boy. He's too big for sandals. I speak splendid English and he laugh. He say, Ultar, you big ox, you split infinitive. I say, I split your head if you stay still long enough. Ha 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 ha! Ho 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 Pretty funny, yes? Hilarious. You should be on cable. This is a key for lifting manhole covers. You carry some strange stuff with you, mister. Have I shown you this? Yes, mister. Have you seen this man before? Oh, most certainly. Was here only yesterday. Here? Yesterday? My God, he's close. Yes, he was asking a lot of questions, just like you. What did he ask about? He asked about American called Stoby. Stobart? Yes, Stobart. You know him. The killer knew my name. What else did he ask about? He asked about a German man called Klobner. I tried to remember the name of the man the conspiracy had lost in Syria. Was his name Klausner? Sure, that is what Oltar said. Klausner. I told this man in the picture, Klausner wanted to go up to Bull's Head. Hold on, he wanted to go where? Bull's Head. Big hill, 10 mile out of town. Maybe 60. When was that? Oh, maybe a week ago. What can you tell me about this Bull's Head Hill? It's most magnificent, lovely views. Worth visiting, yes, by indeedity. How do I get there? No, let me guess. You need fine luxury guide to take you there in air-conditioned taxi. Woe is me. Where can I find such a guide? And Ultar is most luxurious guide for most literally some way, in any direction. Gee willikers, lucky old me. Are you desirous of my pleasant and luxuriant service? All right, let's go. First, I regret the formalities. A trip to the bull's head. Mm, 50 Yankee dollars, please. 50 bucks? I don't have 50 bucks. Oh, most unhappy event. Ultar, then sorry, but he cannot take you on ride of lifetime. Hold on, Ultar. Is there nothing I could barter with you? Word that it was so, beloved friend. But my taxi needs gas, and its muffler needs the muffler doctor. Trading for these things is not possible. My heart weeps for the injustice, but it's box or zip. For unfortunate American. This place is certainly hard to find. Oh, yes, it is most exclusive. The membership can be no more than... Hmm. Kind sir, what would you guess the population of the village to be? Gee, I don't know, a couple of thousand? Then I would estimate the membership to be no more than a couple of thousand. Have you met the American couple? Have Ultar met them? Have Ultar met them? Yes, Ultar have met them. And? The most ungenerous. Ultar offered to show them wonders of countryside. They say, is there anything ancient? Ultar say, yes, of course. Nature is ancient. They say, no, anything ancient made by men. And Ultar say, have you seen taxi? Fan belt older than Ozymandias. Ha 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 ha! But they gone. See you around, Ultar. Fare you most splendid, good sir. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. About Bull's Head Hill. Are you desirous of seeing this most splendid place? Well, maybe. A terrific bargain. Only 50 of your Yankee bucks. 50, huh? Well, I still don't have any cash on me, American or otherwise. 
Oh, unfortunate, most extreme. The delights of the Bull's Head Hill then must wait, I fear. Bye for now, Ultor. May good fortune follow you, mister. Damn, the door's locked. Ah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry? Did, did you say something? He say you not to go in toilet. Read sign, matey. Matey? It lose something in translation. By staring hard at the notice and squinting, I discovered I couldn't understand a word of it. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be. Could you tell me what that sign means? It's a door stay shut until brush come back. Signed, the management. Oh, well, what does that mean? Manager buy lovely new toilet brush, leaves it by wash basin for 10 minutes, come back, it's been stealing, stolen. Not even out of wrapper. He damn cross, lock up toilet and say, Nobody use fine pristine toilet until brush given back. We say, what we do till then, eh? He say, cross legs and use superior willpower. And that's what you've been doing? No. Ultar use bucket. See you around, Ultar. Fair you most splendid, good sir. Even if I'd wanted to spit, my mouth was too dry. Hello again, sir. Hello, kebab? Mmm, yes? Well, goodbye. Have a nice day. Most good. Suddenly, I realized the horrific truth. The guy was basting the kebabs with a toilet brush. It may never have seen the inside of a toilet bowl, but it was still hardly appetizing. Hi, Nijo. Hello again, sir. And how may I help you this time? That's not a very friendly cat you got there, Nijo. No, sir. It is a very unfriendly cat. Why do you keep it? Oh, it's not mine. It just rests where it pleases. And today, it pleases to rest there. As Kipling would say, it is a cat that walks by itself. Fiercely independent. And it smells. Who's the guy selling the kebabs? Oh, that's Arto. A miserable blighter, to be sure, sir. He doesn't seem very happy. He never is. Day in, day out, a face like a wet Wednesday. Whatever one of those is. Does he speak any English? Not cogently, no. You really want this ball? You know I do, sir. See you around, Nijo. Ta-ta for now, sir. Hi, Nijo. Hello again, sir. And how may I help you this time? You really want this ball? You know I... Hi, Nijo. Hello again. 
Look, this is going to sound a bit strange, but I need Arto's brush. What? The brush he bastes the kebabs with? Yes. Let me find some dirty postcards for you instead. Nijo, this is serious. Arto stole that brush he's using from a friend, and I want to get it back. Perhaps I could help you, old chap. Uh, maybe? Perhaps? Maybe what? Perhaps what? I do not wish to see mercenaries, sir, but uh, I am a merchant, and merchants trade. Merchant? This isn't Sears and Roebuck here. Well, if you're going to be disagreeable... No, no, you're right. Uh, what would you like? I seem to recall that you have something that might alleviate my boredom. A globe of delight, a Rubicon spheroid of heavenly pleasure. You mean the ball, don't you? A tiny spherule of form that barely spans my hand, yet promises hours of amusement. If you mean the ball, why don't you just say so? Can I have the ball back, mister? All right, here you go. People say bad things about Americans, but you're okay in my book. What people? What bad things? Never mind that now. Remember the brush? Right, yes, the brush. All you have to do with Arto is be polite. It lightens his day, makes it all worthwhile for him again. How can I be polite to the guy when I can't speak a word of Syrian? Arabic. That's what I meant. Simply memorize this phrase. il ach il kalb il ach il kalb Close enough. Now, go over to Arto and deliver those honeyed words even unto his delicate ear. He won't be able to do enough for you. Really? Really. What exactly does il akul kalb mean? A polite but subtly complimentary greeting. He won't be able to do enough for you. So long, Nijo. Toodle peep, sir. Hi there, Dwayne. Hi there, George. How can I help you, young? Do you know what il akul kalb means? Sorry, I don't speak Arabic. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. Hello again, sir. Hello, kebab? Mmm, yeah? Um, il akul kalb? Filthy, bad, bad. I kill you! Whoa, calm down. I just... Feet, do your thing. Hi, Nijo. What the heck did you tell me to tell him? Patience, sir. Patience? Patience? I've been chased by a homicidal kebab seller, and you expect me to be patient? But consider, sir, while you were running from the irate Arto, the irate Arto wasn't using the brush. Hold on. Are you telling me that I've been used as a diversionary tactic? Your brush, sir. I can't believe that you put me on that kebab seller's death list for a toilet brush. The ends justify the means, sir. Yeah, but I noticed it wasn't your butt that was on the line, though. They also serve who only stand and wait, sir. Oh, spare me.
Thanks for getting the brush and risking my life to do it. Anytime. Glad to be of service. See you around, Nijo. Ta ta for now, sir. Hello again, sir. Filthy! Bad! Okay, okay, I'm going. Hello again, friend. There wasn't much point in trying to launch an in-depth conversation when I couldn't speak Arabic and he couldn't speak, period. Well, I did know a few words of Arabic, but doubted the wisdom of using them. Here's your brush, sir. It wasn't easy getting it back. The manager took the brush from me gave me the toilet keys as my reward, and stomped off. What was all that about? Manager, he say, bah, look at state of this. Need much cleaning and detergent before go around my Yuben. He said all that? Body language account for much, you know? Oh, yes, indeedy. It was a roller towel dispenser. Hello? Anybody in there? No answer, so I gave it a push. The design of the toilet was a little different from what I was used to. But a toilet chain is a toilet chain all over the world. Oops.
The fall hadn't done the statuette much good. It had lost its arms and gotten pretty chipped. Hi, Nijo. Hello again, sir. What happened to your ball, Nijo? I regret to say that it has been confiscated by my father. Oh, Nijo, I'm sorry. Not to worry, sir. Soon he will forget why he has the ball and put it on the stand. At which point, I shall recover it. I'm sorry about the statuette being broken as well. Again, do not fret, sir. It has been on the shelf for a long time. As merchandise, it did not have legs. Now it hasn't got any arms either. Very droll, sir. So long, Nijo. Toodle peep, sir. The statuette looked pretty sorry for itself after its fall, chipped with both arms broken off. The plaster seemed to soak up the grease paint until it began to look like stone. Hi there, Dwayne. Hi there, George. How can I help you, young fella? What do you think of this? Good gravy. Looks old. Yeah, I had to turn this town upside down. Boy, your luck's better than ours. Looks Roman. I wouldn't know. What'll they say back home? How much do you want, George? Oh, I couldn't. It's the find of a lifetime. I mean... Fifty bucks. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Here you go. And here you go. Okay, well, I'll see you around, Dwayne. Count on it, George. Hello again, Ultar. Praise be to Allah. I am blessed with your bountiful presence once more. Look, Ultar, $50 US. A splendid sum. Exactly sufficient for an exciting air-conditioned trip to the bull's head. What say you, oh adventurous one? Okay, it's a deal. Here's the cash. Ah, most Splendid. As you say, the cash price moolah is correct. Mister, we make with haste. Where exactly is your taxi? Because the only vehicle I can see around here is an aging army surplus truck. Yes? Ah. Okay, I'll be along in a minute. It didn't seem right to take off with the toilet keys, so I left them on the bar. Hello again, Ultar. His most splendid and adventurous client. What does il akal kalb mean? Who teach you that? Najo told me to say it to Arto. And Arto come after you with big knife, yes? Yeah, how did you know? I know Arto. You tell him in bad Arabic that his kebabs made from dog meat. I said he was using dog food? No wonder he went crazy. Ultar not mean dog food. Ultar mean dog. Oh. Ooh. 
that's your taxi? Oh, yes. Most assuredly. Most entirely splendid taxi in all Marib. It looks like an old army truck to me. Bah! You Americans with your cheeky board caps and your jut hashes. You have lost sight of what a taxi should truly be. About four tons by the look of it. There. You have hit the nail in the nutshell. Okay, already. Let's go. Regrettably not most esteemed fair. There is a minor problem of a tiny nature. The fan belt has taken it upon itself to break. So what are you going to do? What can I do? I must wait for a ride to the garage for a replacement. How long is that going to take? One day, maybe six. I can't wait that long. We've got to get moving. But how, my friend? I'll think of something. Bye for now, Ultar. May good fortune follow you, mister. Hello again, Ultar. He's most splendid and... Is this any use to you? My friend, the very thing, yes! Ultar took the towel from me, cut it in two lengthways, and gave me half back. With his half, he did the kind of fan belt replacement that's normally done with stockings. Now, if I knot the ends together, so... Serviceable, yes? Very serviceable indeed. Stockings might work on a Bentley, but on a truck, the coarse toweling did the job nicely. Come along, my friend. You want to see the bull's head? Yes! A young tree grew at the edge of the drop. Centuries of hot days and cold nights had opened a crack in the cliff edge, deep into the living rock. Maybe not. Hmm. Maybe not. With a flourish, I tied the end of the towel to the stick with a textbook reef knot. I could see that crack would make a good anchor point. Well, that looked really safe, but I had no choice. I hadn't anticipated going mountaineering when I'd come to Syria.
I didn't like the idea of putting my hand in there. But there was something in there, a metal ring, as wide as my hand. So, there was a metal ring in the niche. It seemed like another calling card from the Templars. I took a firm hold of the ring and pulled. Whoa there! Around the corner, I found the corpse. Oh my God. Klausner? Large as life and twice as dead. I'd hardly had time to accept the fact when I heard the door mechanism start up again. Oh man, no! The door had slammed shut, trapping me. I had a bad feeling about how Klausner had died. I couldn't think of anything to do with the statue, apart from scaring small children with it. A stone head bearing three bearded faces. It was a strange image, but a powerful one, redolent with antiquity and ancient mysteries. Sure was an ugly one, though. Without getting too close, I couldn't see any marks of violence, apart from his fingertips being scraped raw. And that seemed self-inflicted. Klausner had been pretty smart to get this far, but he was still dead. Okay, all right. Hey, what's this? I'd found some kind of lens, a very old lens made from a very hard glass. That settled it. The knight on the manuscript had been holding a lens the whole time, not a crystal ball. Up on the wall was an inscription, partially eroded by the ages. Something, something, in Occidenta Sita Est, in Ora Mundi. The Latin was clear enough, but what did it mean? The mouth's opening. It must be Ultar. My God, if he comes in, we'll both be trapped. Ultar, don't come in. It's a trap. Stay where you are. You. Hello, Mr. Stobart. We meet in the most unusual place. Please, do not make any sudden moves. I have no desire to maim you. Did you say maim? I did. Dead men tell no tales, as you say. And I want to hear everything that you have to tell me. And what if I don't want to talk? Then I shall, most regrettably, have to kill you. Rest assured, however, that I am an excellent shot. You would not suffer. Oh, that's good. Uh, believe me, I'm really assured. It is rather dark in here. I think we should conduct our business outside. Why should I make myself an easier target? If I fire at you, Mr. Stobart, I shall hit you even in here. But... Unfortunately, my marksmanship will suffer. It could be the difference between hitting you in the leg or the groin. Boy, it sure is hot in here. No sudden moves, Mr. Stobart. Now then, where shall we start? How about being bosom buddies and you putting that gun away? Klausner, do you know where he is? Yep, he's dead. Just around the corner of the cave. You want to look? I'll take your word for it. How did he die? Starvation or dehydration by the look of it. He was caught in this trap you were shouting about. Yes, I suspected as much. 
the Templars were not ones to give away their secrets lightly. Was he carrying anything of importance? Yeah, he was carrying some sort of lens. I've got it with me. Give it to me. I don't think so. Don't be a fool, Mr. Stobart. If I give it to you, what's to stop you killing me? What is to stop me killing you anyway? You might hit the lens. Not if I shoot you in the head. When I fall, the lens might get broken. Yes. You plead convincingly, Mr. Stobart. Perhaps you will live to see another day. Perhaps. Was there anything else? Well, there was something in Latin up on the wall. What did it say? In Accidenta Sita Est, in Ora Mundi. Ah, the words of Caesar. Yes, that makes sense. Well, I know that roughly it means to the west, to the edge of the world. But what the heck is that about? It tells me where the sword of Baphomet lies. Mr. Stobart, I am sure that you are just what you appear to be. A gifted amateur. Thanks, I think. But I can no longer tolerate your interference. There is far more at stake than you realize. I cannot risk you inadvertently helping my enemies. So what are you going to do? I regret that we must end this here and now. What exactly do you mean? I am a professional. You will feel no pain. Oh, man. You're gonna kill me? Your only choice now is whether you die like a man or like a dog. Okay, you're the boss. I'll take my medicine. You are an honorable man, Mr. Stobart. A rare breed. I should like to shake your hand. Yeah, well, what the heck? It was a long way down. Below, I could see Ultar's truck. Luckily, the canopy on Ultar's truck broke my fall. Thank goodness for that. The worst part of the experience was Ultar's driving. What about the lens? Is it still in one piece? Oh, yeah. Well, it's good to see you again, George. Really? Well, I have to say, I'd have enjoyed Syria a lot more if you'd been there. I wouldn't have been much help. Anyway, you did just fine on your own. Hey, Nico, shake hands with me. No chance, Buster. This is the tool I use to get into the sewers. Yes, you showed me before. Have you any idea what this lens might be used for? As a magnifying glass, obviously. I'm sure you'll find it very useful. I'll be back as soon as I can. Okay. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Does this lens mean anything to you? No, it doesn't. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Hi, it's me again. 
Again? Yes, I spoke to you earlier. But of course. It is Monsieur Hardy. Stobart. Uh, George Stobart. It doesn't matter. The case was empty. The glass case was intact, but the tripod had been replaced by a sign reading, Exhibit Temporarily Removed. Hi, Andre. Hello, Georgie. What's with the long face? Haven't you heard? The tripod was stolen. No kidding. I just don't get it. So many other treasures. And if these choose the tripod. A modern day alchemist, perhaps? Who knows? There's no shortage of crazies in Paris. Hey, I visited Nicole's apartment. Yeah, she told me you came by. Ooh, quite a fine Georgie boy. I didn't expect anything quite so sexy. I hope you're referring to the manuscript. Mais oui, of course. Where have you been? Nicole said you were away. I just returned from Syria. Syria? On the trail of the Templars? It's a long story, but I found the bull's head. It was referred to on the manuscript, remember? Yes, uh, what is it? A secret cave built into a high cliff face. In the cave, I discovered a map bearing a phrase in Latin. In occidenta cita est in ora mundi. The island of Britain lies at the edge of the world to the west. Strange. That map seems to contain a series of pointers. Like I said, it's a treasure map. Does this lens mean anything to you? Nothing. Did I show you this tool? Yes, you did, though I can't imagine why. What did you make of the manuscript? It dates from the time of the Crusades. We guessed that from the Templar seal. It's a story and pictures like a modern day comic book. What story does the manuscript tell? I don't know. It was probably produced for the tourist market. Tourists? Oh, we oui, pilgrims in our thousands on our way to Jerusalem. The tourist trade is nothing new, you know. It's been around for centuries. Ever since Joshua made a packet selling souvenir bricks from the walls of Jericho. Have you deciphered any of the images on the manuscript? There's uh, very little I can be sure about. The slang of the bull could be a reference to uh, Mithras. Who's he? A Persian god, almost as popular as Christ at one time. The only thing I can be sure of is the knight. He's Spanish. How can you tell that? The writing on the shield, the reference to Ave Maria. No self-respecting knight from Northern Europe would have borne a coat of arms like that. Can you identify the knight's coat of arms? I already did, Georgie. He's a member of the De Vasconcellos family from the Costa Calida. Were they famous? No. They're not mentioned after the 15th century. Oh. The uh, spotlight of history moved on. They are probably long dead. Do you think the manuscript could be the map to the Templar treasure? Frankly, no. That's too far-fetched. The manuscript is interesting enough and a rare find, but that's all. Wouldn't it be terrific if it was a map, though? The treasure of the Knights Templar. A romantic notion, Georgie, but extremely improbable. Did I show you this tool? 
Yes, you did. Though I can't imagine why. Thanks for your help, Andre. You're welcome. Hi, is this the DeVasconcellos house? Who wants to know? I could tell the old coot was going to be trouble. My name's George Stobart. I was wondering whether... The house is not open to the public. This is the DeVasconcellos house. And what business is that of yours, senor? Look, all I want is to speak to the head of the household. There is no household. Only the countess and myself. What do you know about the Templars? Who wants to know? Are you angling for a bribe or something? You have nothing that I want, senor, except the pleasure of your absence. The guy was obviously protecting the Countess against the whole world, but why? Tell me about the Countess de Vasconcelos. She doesn't receive guests. That's all you need to know. You don't even know what I have to talk to her about. She hasn't won the lottery, has she? No, she hasn't won the lottery. A more cunning man might have claimed that she had. Oh, yeah? They might have, might they? And that more cunning man would have been kicked off the premises. The Countess doesn't do the lottery. Do you know what this is? See, si, I have a similar tool for opening culverts on the estate. Do you know what this is? See. Si, I have a similar tool for opening culverts on the estate. Okay. Well, I'll see you around. Adios. Hey, you. Yeah? What is it? You would not like it if people just wandered into your home, would you? Well, no, I guess not. Then show a little consideration. Okay. Uh, sorry. The hose ran from some sort of utility room all the way to the lawn. I didn't like the idea of carrying 30 yards of hose around me, so I left it alone. Sorry to hear it. It's always sad when an old tradition comes to an end. Did you have anything to do with it? See, si, you. Well, I'm shocked. I'm mortified. How could you think such a thing? Very easily, senor. Very easily. 
I'm going to find out why my horse has stopped. And that means going into the house. You are not, absolutely not, to go in the house. If you do go in the house, I will set the dogs on you. I hid behind the armor and waited for developments. Hey, you! I know you are there, American. All right, you dogs, I'm coming. Madre Dios, who are you? My name's George Stobart. I'm sorry to burst in like this. You must leave at once. You're not wanted here. Please, if you just listen a minute. Very well. State your business, Senor Stobart. There's been a series of murders, part of some conspiracy. Anyway, the trail led me here. Here? There is nothing for the outside world here. Over 600 years ago, there was. What do you mean? This whole thing ties in somehow with the Knights Templar. The Knights Templar are dust. They had a secret that was so important, they went to a lot of trouble to hide it. I do not see what this has to do with my family. Your family had a strong connection with the Templars, right? I believe that they've planted some clues here. <laughs> Why should I believe a, a complete stranger who barges into my home? Just let me have a look around. If I find nothing... You'll be spending the night at the police station. Very well. Please, sit down. Thank you. Do you know what this is? No. It looks very practical, though. Do you know what this is? No. I know your family is involved with the Templars, but I don't know how. You should be asking how my family were involved, Senor Stobart. The Templars ceased to exist centuries ago. And as for De Vasconcelos, the line dies with me. I'm sorry. Don't be. Okay, whatever happened, happened almost 700 years ago. So, if the Templars left any clues, they're going to be in stuff that dates back to the early 14th century. Obviously. So, what do you have around here that's early medieval? Early medieval. Let me think. Well, the house is relatively modern, a scant three centuries old. Or, of course, the chess set. That chess set is over 600 years old? It must be worth a fortune. Indeed it is. Not that I would part with it, of course. No, I wouldn't either. Uh, that's the sort of thing that gets handed down to your children. Sorry. Its value is less than you might think. The set is not complete. One of the pieces is a modern replacement. As to the original, it was lost a long time ago. Nobody has any idea where it is? No. The children had it when they were taken. Children? What children? All in good time, Senor Stobart. May I examine the chess set? Certainly, but do not move any of the pieces. Okay, thanks. Close up, the modern piece stood out like a sore thumb. There was something else odd about the set. All of the original pieces had irregular bases. My lady, I have to warn you, there's a... 
You? Why, I feed you to the dogs. Lopez, what have I told you about feeding intruders to the dog? But, my lady. Never without my permission. Senor Stobart, if I find that you're wasting my time, you will be fed to the dogs. Now, I want to show you something interesting. Follow me. Lopez, unlock the door, Papa Boy. This is the only remaining structure on the estate contemporary with the temple. Nice. What is it, a summer house? A mausoleum, Senor Stobart. Oh. Come with me. Hey, Senor. Yeah? I do not know what you have told my lady to be shown these favors. But I do not trust you. You've got nothing to worry about. Aren't you coming in? No, the dead do not interest me. My garden is a living thing. I will be there. Wow, this is old. It was constructed in the 13th century as the final resting place of the Devas Concello Temple. Well maintained. These are my ancestors, and they deserve respect. I come here at least once a week to say a prayer for them. Mind if I have a look around? By all means. On removing the Bible, I found a pattern on the lectern top. Hey, it's a checkerboard. The lectern top had a pattern of glass squares on it. Close up, I could see that the pattern was made up of over a checkerboard. Some of the squares had little jagged holes in the middle. May I ask you something? You may ask. What's the story with the glass chessboard? A glass chessboard? Oh, the pattern on the lectern. Purely decorative, I'm sure. There are pieces of glass missing from it. Oh, it has been like that since I was a girl. You certainly know your history. What's your opinion of the Templars, Senor Stobart? The Templars? Well, they seem no worse than a lot of the knightly orders. Uh, you are mistaken. Compared to the simpering politicians of the hospitalers or the brutish Teutonics, the Knights Templar were the embodiment of chivalry. The filthy, money-grabbing French king and his pet pope did a great wrong. A bane settled upon my family at the whim of that self-seeking tyrant. It was all a long time ago. Some things don't die. Injustice is one of them. The gaps in the glass chessboard look awfully deliberate. No, it is ridiculous. What possible significance can it have? It's part of a chessboard, and the gaps are for... Senor Stobart, you cannot mean... This place was built for the Templars. Your chess set is as old as the Templars. It's kind of suggestive, isn't it? I think this must be it. This is what the manuscript is pointing to. This is extraordinary. Am I to understand that the Templars left a puzzle here? And in all of this time, we failed to realize that there was a puzzle. It was wonderful to watch the Countess change before my eyes. Right. Well, no time for wallowing in self-pity, eh, Senor Stobart? This mystery has had a good long run, but it ends here and now. All those years of fatalism were falling away from her. 
Lopez! Lopez! Put that hold down and listen! Go to the house and get my chest set! Yes! The old chest set! Oh, damn the game! Now hurry! Oh my, this is exciting, is it not? Don't get too excited. I, this could be a blind alley. Oh, I do not believe that for a moment. It's good to see you happy. Happy? <laughs> you know, I think I am. While we're waiting, I'd really like to know what happened here. I mean, the curse and everything? It all began at the time of the dissolution of the Templars. Don Carlos had already left their ranks to become a scholar. Don Carlos? Is he the guy who went missing? Si, but he had reckoned without the local bishop. The bishop envied us our lands and determined to use the papal edict as an excuse to destroy us. Don Carlos was on one of his scholarly journeys when the Inquisition arrived. When Don Carlos returned, it was to find his loyal manservant slain and his children gone. They took the kids? But why? Oh, we will never know. The bishop denied all knowledge of the children's disappearance. But witnesses had seen his men kill the servants who had been charged to protect them. What happened to Don Carlos? Uh, he swore he'd find his children if he had to go to the edge of the world. He put on his armor and took up his sword and shield and rode out alone. He was never seen again. Ah, Lopez, you have the pieces. Si, sí, my lady, as you asked. Por favor, Senor Stobart, would you be so kind? My lady. Calm yourself, Lopez. I believe Senor Stobart's motives are pure. Very well, my lady. My lady seems to trust you. But you don't. No, senor. It fits, senor Stobart. It fits. Working quickly, I found which pieces went into which holes. That is not a good idea. Stobart, look! What is that? It's not... It's not the Holy Grail, is it? No, Senor Stobart. It is the communion chalice of the De Vasconcelos. Missing for almost 700 years. Wow! Well, go on. I... I cannot. I can hardly believe it is real. Ah, go ahead. Live a little. This is your moment of triumph, Senor Stobart. Sure, I'm sure. The possibility of death traps only occurred to me a few days later. So the curse of the Duvasconcellos is lifted? Oh, no. The Countess was thrilled to find the lost chalice. But there's still the riddle of the missing knight. 
Well, you can forget about that now and get back to finding the Templar secret. Uh, actually, I promised the Countess I'd find Don Carlos. You what? I can explain everything. You have got the odds for a withered old Spanish aristocrat? The Countess entrusted me with the chalice and the quest for her ancestor's tomb. You're as crazy as she is. Haven't you got enough problems? Khan and the Templars? It's all part of the same thing. The chalice is important, I'm sure. The manuscript pointed us to the knight, and I have to find him. What then? I don't know. But when the knight and the chalice are reunited, maybe I will. This is the chalice I discovered in Spain. I still can't figure out why the Countess gave it to you. After losing it for all those years, she simply gave it away to a total stranger. She's one prawn short of a paella. The Countess is a fine lady. You shouldn't compare her with seafood. I wouldn't be surprised if there's something going on between you and that Countess. Are you serious? She's old enough to be my grandmother. I'll be back as soon as I can. Okay. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Hmm, maybe not. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. You're back. Oui, I have returned. Hello again. Hello again, monsieur. Well, I wasn't expecting to see you back here again. No? Well, it is a strange thing, but I am here on duty. On duty? But you're just sitting there drinking wine. No, I am not just drinking wine. I am under cover. I must be missing something. You're in uniform. Precisely, monsieur. My cover is that of an indolent, wine-guzzling police officer. You've got me convinced. Merci. But in re reality, my every muscle is poised, every nerve honed. I am drawn tight, ready to pounce. Pajang! Who or what were you planning to pizang on? You must have heard, m monsieur, of the terror that is gripping Paris. You mean the killings? Oh, at last, someone's taken action. <laughs> People die every day. No, no, I am on the trail of Sewer Jacques. I, uh, who? Sewer Jacques. The terror of the Septuagenian city. He pops up here, he pops up there. The cops, they seek him everywhere. Is he so hush or beneath the neck? That damned elusive Sir Jacques. Bravo, that's very good. Merci. I was up half the night writing that. Who is this Sewer Jacques character, anyway? Ah, if we but knew that, we could have him in custody in an hour. But he is cunning. To despoil the sewers of our fair city, he has co committed many deceptions. He has pretended to be a police officer and deluded a poor war veteran. Uh-oh. He has pretended to be a jongleur. Wow. Is that the time? And an American tourist. What nationality are you, monsieur? Canadian. Well, uh, gotta go now. See ya. Well, it's not everyone who can say they started an urban myth.
A priest stood by the pews, energetically polishing something. Uh, excuse me, Father. Pardon? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Not at all, Monsieur. It will be my pleasure to help you. What do you know about the Knights Templar? You have come to the right place, if that is your interest. Many of them were executed in the square outside. It was a disgrace to France. Well, the Pope was right behind it, though. Clement V was a man of mammon, not of God. That's kind of forthright for a priest, isn't it? You think so? It is hard to be sure what happened. It is so long ago. How long have you worked here? Hardly work, monsieur. This is a calling. I have been helping Father Flambert for nearly six months now. I guess you don't know much about the history of this church, then. Just a little. You've got quite a shine on that candlestick. Ah, oui. Anything less than best would be an insult to the Almighty. I guess so. I never thought of it like that. You must be proud to have such an incredible collection of stained glass. Pride is a sin, monsieur. But it is hard not to marvel when the light shines through them. It is a fine example of the artisan's genius. I have here a sewer key. Ah, oui? I don't know why I'm showing you this. Neither do I. I have here... Ah, I... Neither... Have you ever seen anything like this lens? No, never. The glass seems subtly colored in some way. Yeah, I've never noticed that before. There's grease paint on this tissue. Oui. You are correct. What do you make of this chalice? It uh, certainly looks very old. About as old as this church, I think. There seems to be an engraving on it. Yeah? What does it say? I do not know. It is very tarnished. With your permission, uh, I could try polishing it. Uh, I promise I will be very careful. That'd be very good of you. This uh, shouldn't take very long. Feel free to look around. Okay, thanks. A statue of a knight holding a staff and a scroll. A stone knight lay in full stone armor, blank eyes looking at the ceiling. I wondered if this guy had died in combat. Carrying all that armor around must have been hard work. The statue had any secrets. It was concealing them pretty well. Biblical references engraved into the tomb edge to guide his way to the next world. I guess. Waiting in prayer for the judgment day. A knight's tomb, his effigy in marble lying in perpetual state. A knight there in the company of his fellows. A huge stained glass window formed a magnificent centerpiece for its neighbors. I didn't recognize the biblical story in it. I was a Sunday school dropout.
the statue had any secrets, it was concealing them pretty well. A priest stood by the pew. A row of old pews, beautifully carved and glowing with polish. I thought of all the people who must have sat here over the decades. All those Parisian derrieres, firm buttocks of the young ladies, the flabby flesh of the old men. That wasn't a pleasing image, so I went back to the young ladies. Whoa! A statue of a knight holding a staff and a scroll. The statue had any secret. A scroll was a symbol of scholarship. I knew that much. Per disciplinum meum lux videbis. A bit of a stained glass window. Wow. Hoping for a big insight while squinting through a hunk of statuary had been pretty optimistic, I guess. The lens fitted into the end of the scroll like a hand into a glove. Hey! A Knight Templar burning at the stake and a date. Let me see. M C C C X I V. That's 1314. Hello again, Father. Hey, thanks. It is my pleasure, monsieur. What was the writing on the chalice? It was not writing, uh, my mistake. It was a coat of arms. The remarkable thing is that it seems very familiar. Yeah? Oui, I think I have seen it on that wool tomb in the far corner. That winged horse is quite distinctive. Did you know that the center window conceals an image of a man burning at the stake? The burning man? What, you knew? That there was a hidden image? No. But the church has a reputation for being haunted. Many times, people have claimed to have seen a burning man in the window. But when others, they look, there is nothing. Perhaps the light has to be just so for the figure to appear. Yeah, or maybe you need a special lens. You must be proud to have such an incredible collection of stained glass. Pride is a sin, monsieur, but it is hard. It is a fine ex Boy, what a shine you got on this! Merci. It is all in the wrist action. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. I wondered if this guy had died in combat. A stone knight. A stone knight. Carrying all that. I was surprised Philip LeBel had left this place alone. The second stone knight in a row of four. Just think. There's a dead guy under there. A stone knight. No. It couldn't be. Could it? Now that my attention had been drawn to it, there was no mistake. There was no name on it. But the coat of arms was undeniably the Pegasus of the De Vasconcellos family. I'd found the last resting place of Don Carlos. My eye was drawn to the biblical references carved into the edge of the tomb. Hey, maybe these biblical references mean something. Psalms 32.7, John 4.11, Corinthians 1, 4, 5, and just one more. Psalms 22.21. 21. 
I may not be perfect, but I've got a memory like a steel trap. The chalice had led me to these inscriptions, but it looked like a happy coincidence to me. After all, the de Vasconcellos arms were already on the manuscript. Nope, I was still convinced that the chalice had some significance all of its own. I didn't have time to sit around. Hi, André. Hello, Georgie. While I was in Syria, I discovered a strange pagan statue. It was like a head with three bearded faces. Horrible. That sounds as if it could be Baphomet, the idol described by the Templars. The poor Knights of Christ had an idol that looked like that? Allegedly. The description of the idol came from the evidence extracted by the Inquisition. Mind you, not one statue or idol was ever found on Templar property. Until now, that is. Just last month, a statue of Baphomet was unearthed right here in Paris. Where? At the Institut Hermétique de Naval. The statue is beneath the foundations. It was discovered by some workmen while renovating the building. Can you tell me any more about the statue of Baphomet? It's a fearful image, even now, a bearded head. The base of the statue is carved with Templar symbols. One of the workmen noticed a curious stain at the base. He claimed it looked like blood. Blood? That's right. What do you make of this cup, André? It's a 14th century communion vessel. Spanish, probably. You sure know your onions. Did I show you this tool? Yes, you did, though I can't imagine why. Thanks for your help, André. You're welcome. Excuse me, could you help me? What is it? I've got a few questions. What does the word Templar suggest to you? Templar? Uh, nothing. Nothing. You're doing a fine job. Merci. I have my professional pride. I don't think I've ever seen a Galois smoked so stylishly. It's a natural talent. I'm being sarcastic. I'm being indifferent. You're very good at that as well. Merci. Vive l'indifférence. So, what are you doing here? I am having my break. Yeah, I mean, when you finish your break. Oh, when I finish my break? An interesting concept, monsieur. 
You'll probably need to think about it. I could have another cigarette while I consider. Perhaps tomorrow too? Okay, let me put things differently. What were you hired to do here? I was hired to keep the archaeological dig in the basement of this building clear of debris and to touch up damage to the door frames with my little pot of paint. It's a very responsible job. Unfortunately, I'm not a very responsible person. So what do you know about the excavation? I know they won't let me in to do my job. I would complain to my union, but tell uh, You couldn't be bothered to join. Right. Tell you what, though. I'm surprised at the sort of people interested in this uh, excavation. What's unusual about the visitors to the excavation? <laughs> None of them look like archaeologists to me. Do you know what an archaeologist looks like? Sleepy suits, crocodile-eyed attaché cases, Rolex oyster. But no archaeologist dresses like that. Quite right, monsieur, quite right. So, who are they? Who cares as long as they pay me? I've got a sewer key. Yeah, I used to work in the sewer. Oh? What happened? I had a cigarette break in a pocket of methane. A manual cover landed on the other side of the Seine and I was sacked. I've got a sewer key. Yeah, I used to work in the sewer. Oh? I had... A manual cover... Have you seen this man before? Yes, he asked me a lot of questions, just like you. I was pretty sure the shaken shock had shot its bolt in Syria. I have some plaster of Paris. Amazing. Has a guy calling himself Merlin been nosing around? Was he wearing a t-shirt with my name is Merlin on it? I doubt it. Then how the hell am I supposed to know his name just by looking at him? Huh? Have you ever seen anything like this? Yes, it's a communion chalice. I know, you know, I used to be an altar boy. You? Yes, me. What's so funny about that? Uh, nothing. A greasy tissue. Don't get it too close to my cigarette, monsieur, or there'll be a conflagration. Be seeing you. Au revoir, monsieur. The painter had a pot of gunmetal gray primer hanging from the barrier. There was a closed door with toilet scratched into the cheap veneer. There was a telephone on the far wall. A guard stood by a door I guessed led to the excavation. He looked pretty pompous. Well, not so much pretty, just pompous. Hi? Uh, excuse me? Oui? What do you know about the Knights Templar? There was a long pause during which the guard said nothing. Then he said... Nothing. Nothing at all? Is this a test? What, like a history pop test? No, like a... test. Okay, yes, it's a test. Then I know absolutely nothing about the Templars. So, what exactly are you doing here? I'm guarding. You expect to find me sharing sheep? Take it easy, I just didn't realize you were a guard. I'd like to know what you're guarding, please. That's a secret. It wouldn't happen to be an archaeological site, would it? Are you asking me or telling me? I'm telling you. Then why ask? I had a feeling this was no normal hole in the ground. The guard was being amazingly evasive. It was going to take more than goodwill to get past him.
Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. There was a closed door with toilet scratched into the cheap veneer. That door's locked, monsieur. Hi again. What is it? Trying to get into a locked washroom. I had the strongest feeling of deja vu. I'd like to use the washroom, but the door's locked. Oh, that's no problem. You can have the key. Thanks. This gadget is a sewer key. So it is. This gadget is... So it is. Have you seen this man before? Oh, you have. Uh, no. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. There was a big old boiler used for heating the building. On the key ring was a big old key that looked like it might fit the excavation door. A filthy wash basin hung on the wall. It was the bar of soap I'd stolen from the washroom of the excavation site. I made an impression of the big key in the cake of soap. I wasn't that interested in what might go into a restroom's garbage to investigate. There was a big old boiler used for heating the building. The shovel used to feed the furnace was stuck into the pile of coal. Capacious as my pockets were, I didn't figure I could cram a shovel in them. I didn't want any coal. There was a big old... The thing felt re... The thing felt really hot. Big demands seemed to be being made on it. I carefully sprinkled the plaster into the soap mold I'd made of the key. The cold taps washer looked to have failed. It was just dribbling down the sink. The cold taps washer I had filled the key's imprint in the s Well, it had taken a while, but I had made myself a completely unconvincing plaster key. Way too fragile to use in a lock. I'd have to substitute it for the real one. Trouble was, it looked like plaster and not metal. Then again, that plaster statue in Syria hadn't looked like stone until I'd been a bit artful with it. Maybe I could improve the key as well. Uh, no. It was the soggy tissue. Hey, monsieur, don't go with my keys. What is it? Here's the keys. Thanks. Merci, monsieur. Hey!
Monsieur, get away from my paint pot. Okay. I should think so. Meddling with a man's paint pot. Pah. Do you mind if I use the phone? Be my guest. I'm paid to guard this door. The phone can look after itself. Kuller. Hi, Nico. It's me. I'm at the excavation site. Hi, Georges. What's happening? I'm at the excavation, but they won't let me in. Damn. We need to know what's in there. Don't worry. I've got a scheme. I'm going to need your help, though. Okay. What do you want me to do? I want you to keep somebody on the phone for a while. Who? A painter. I need to get at his pot. Oh, okay. Stay on the line. I'll go and get him. Hi, it's me again. What now? You've got a phone call. For me? Are you certain? It's a woman. She sounded hot. What woman? She must be mistaken, monsieur. Well, she asked for that hunk of a man with the nicotine fingers and his ass hanging out of his pants. Certainly sounds like me. Stand back. It wouldn't do to keep the lady from uh, her hunk. The plaster key had soaked up the paint nicely and now looked pretty convincing. Still felt like plaster, though. To well, monsieur, what a strange woman. She was all over me and then suddenly, nothing but abuse. Really? What? Abuse? Ah, well, I have a cigarette to finish. And, monsieur, if she calls again, I am not available. A thermostat was mounted over a radiator. The radiator was pumping out heat as the thermostat was cranked right over to full. No wonder it was warm in here, even with the door open to the chill of fall. The doorway was full of assorted old tea chests, cardboard boxes, and so on, all empty and all uninteresting. I couldn't imagine what I'd achieved by turning the dial. I couldn't imagine what I'd achieved by turning the dial. Hi again. What is it? It sure is hot in here. I have to have the door open to allow the workmen access, so why not? I turn the heat up. You could wrap up warm. I have my gloves if it gets cold, but why bother when it's warm anyway? I need to use the, uh, toilet again. Again? Already? I have this problem. <laughs> How technical do you want me to get? Hmm, never mind. Here's the key. Talk to you later. Au revoir, monsieur. I turned the heating off.
Quickly and without fuss, I swapped the fake key for the real thing. What is it? I held my breath and hoped that he wouldn't notice the substitution. Here's the keys. Uh, thanks. Merci, monsieur. Hi, Nico. It's me again. I'd guessed. What do you want this time? What did you say to the painter? I shan't repeat it, George. Look, I need to get the guard out of the way. Could you call back and ask him to get the painter again? Okay, I'll call back soon. This looked like a good place to watch things develop. Hey, you! It's the phone! Yeah? Who is it? How should I know? What am I? Your social secretary? It's not a chick, is it? Yes, it's a woman. Are you going to answer it? Does she have a warm, sensual voice like molten chocolate? Yes, yes, she has a really sexy voice. Now get a move on! I'm not talking to her. I can see that. You're wasting time talking to me. No, you don't understand. I refuse to talk to her. You refuse? You refuse? I'm wasting valuable time. Don't make me laugh. Your time valuable? You just stand around all day. I have a highly responsible job. Pa, don't pa me, you elephantine oaf. My job is important. Impossible. They would have hired somebody competent in that case. Meaning what? Instead of which they hired a dismal rent -a cop like you. All epaulettes and no brains. Why, you? This looked set to carry on for some time. It was too good an opportunity to miss. Some planks used to make the catwalk were leaning against the wall. Oh, great. More dead people. Although, the gendarmes weren't likely to pull in any suspects unless they had a time machine. This guy must have been here for centuries. No, thanks. I think I'm carrying enough junk. Now there's a familiar face. There was no doubt about it. It was the same sort of idol I'd seen in Syria. Baphomet. The Templars had certainly been through here. In the middle of the floor was a weird mosaic, all swirling and distorted. Close up, the pattern didn't make any sort of sense. It fanned out around an axis point, a kind of focus to one side. And there it was, decoded by the curves of the chalice, the image of a church. I found out what the chalice was for. You've solved the puzzle? Yeah, there was a distorted picture at the Baphomet site. When I viewed it in the polished surface of the chalice, it changed. What did it show? A picture of a church with a square tower. 
Look at the chalice now, Nico. What happened? It's shiny. The priest of Montfaucon buffed it up for me. That's incredible. Yeah, looks as good as new. No, you found a use for a priest. That's incredible. This is the tool I used to get into the sewers. Yes, you showed me before. I guess I'd better return the chalice to the Countess. Hurry back, Georges. Oh, hi. Hello, my handsome friend. Hmm, maybe not. See you later. That's right, monsieur. You will. Hi there. Bonjour. Ah, Monsieur Hardy, no? Stobart, George Stobart. Do you know anything about medieval communion cups? No, Monsieur. I was a duffer at school when it came to history. Have you any idea what this tool is used for? Oui, Monsieur. It is a dip stick. I'd like to shake you by the hand. Do you want to be arrested for assaulting a policeman? Huh? I noticed the shake and shock buzzer concealed in your hand. I found this tissue. I? What the hell is that? It's evidence. Evidence of what? Mayonnaise smuggling? The sticky stuff is grease paint. Ah. And that is supposed to make me happy, is it? I suggest you think long and hard about what you're doing with your life, monsieur. Thanks for your help, officer. I'd been planning to return the chalice anyway, but I hadn't expected the trail to bring me here. The Villa de Vasconcelos was as picturesque as ever. The weather was still clear, and Lopez was still watering the damn lawn. I was beginning to suspect that he was surgically attached to that hose. Hi there, Lopez. How's tricks? Senor Stobart. How pleasant to see you. You are well. Fine, thanks. Is the Countess in? She is waiting for you. I will show you up. It's okay, I know the way. Senior Stobart, I feel I owe you an apology. No, you don't. I was impolite on our first meeting. Look, Lopez, just forget about it. I came on like a snake oil merchant. I wouldn't have trusted me in your shoes. You do not understand. Finding the chalice has given my lady a new lease of life. It's a marvel. She smiles, she laughs. The tradesmen are saying that she is on Prozac. Hi, Lopez. Got a minute? Certainly, senor. How can I help you? What's the story behind the chalice vanishing? When the Inquisition raided, in the absence of Don Carlos, it was believed that they had taken it. Naturally, they denied the charge as they denied taking the children. 
And naturally, nobody believed them. But they were telling the truth. The chalice was hidden from them. You don't suppose they were telling the truth about the children as well, do you? Madre de Dios! I had not thought of that. But then what happened to them? I don't know. If the Inquisition didn't take them, then who did? You must speak to my lady of these. Count on it. So the Countess feels that the curse is lifted. I would not put it so strongly. Your discovery of the chalice was proof that the Templars never abandoned the De Vasconcelos. It counts for a great deal with my lady. Do you know what this is? See, si. I have a similar tool for opening culverts on the estate. I've had the chalice polished. Oh, it is magnificent. I've had the chalice polished. Oh, I... Do you recognize this man? No. I don't suppose this red nose means anything to you, does it? Ha! El flojo! El who? El flojo! He is a clown on state television. Oh, is he any good? He is as funny as scabies. Without the laughs. Catch you later, Lopez. Adios, Senor Stobar. Senor Stobart, oh, what a pleasure. Please, sit down. Hi, Countess. The pleasure's all mine. I've brought back your chalice. Why? You've had it cleaned. Yeah, I met an obliging priest with a soft cloth. Have you resolved the Templar mystery? No, not yet. I don't even know what it is I'm after. There are many stories of the knight secreting great wealth away. Whatever. All I know is I don't want the bad guys to get it. Ah, to be young and live in a world of moral absolutes. I discovered something amazing with that chalice in Paris. I found a church where they recognized the coat of arms. I found the tomb of Don Carlos de Vasconcelos. You are sure? There can be no mistake? The coat of arms on the chalice matches the one on the tomb. Incredible. You have my most profound thanks. I must go there as soon as possible. Yeah? Well, I'd be happy to show you the city. There's still the mystery of the missing chess piece. I do not think that it will ever be discovered unless the fate of the children is revealed. The Inquisition were suspected of taking the chalice and the kids, right? We know now they were innocent of the first crime. What if... They did not take the children either. Then what happened to them? The Inquisition admitted to killing Don Carlos's manservant. Now, this guy had been told to protect the kids at all costs, right? That is correct. I think he hid them and the chalice when he got wind that the Inquisition was coming. With him dead and Don Carlos driven mad with grief, there was nobody left who knew the secret. You know what this means, don't you? I fear so. The children are still here somewhere. If this is so, then it is small wonder that the Vasconcelos are cursed. There's something else that I discovered carved on Don Carlos's tomb. Biblical references. What are the references, Senor Stobart? Psalms 32.7, Corinthians. I am not a good enough scholar to know the Bible chapter and verse. I meant, what are the quotations? You know, I forgot to ask the priest. I'll have a look around if that's okay. 
My home is your home. I shall remain here. It was a rod with a cone and a hook on the end. I guessed it was for snuffing out the big candle in the chandelier. The candle had burnt brilliantly, but only for a couple of minutes, some kind of special formulation, I guess, and had yielded up this, a complex shape expertly cut in stone. I figured it was some kind of key. Now that it had given up its secret, the glass squares and the lectern were just decorative again. It was the Spanish Bible I borrowed from the mausoleum. The tissue was pretty charred, but the grease paint had done most of the burning. Hello again. Mind if I sit? Please, be my guest. What does this charred tissue suggest to you? You have pyromaniac tendencies. What do you make of this? It looks like some sort of key. Where did you get it from? It was buried inside the great candle in the mausoleum. Inside it? What have you done to it? I, uh, lit it. But it is irreplaceable. 
Listen, the candle was to be lit in case of Moorish attack, right? Well, it burnt down in no time and revealed this key thing. Maybe that was the real purpose of lighting the candle. What are you suggesting? That lighting the candle was the equivalent of break glass in case of emergency. A sentiment must not stand in the way of solving this mystery. You did the right thing. Here's the Bible from the mausoleum. Very well. Let us begin. The first reference. Psalms 32, 7. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. My hiding place. Don't get your hopes up too high. This might just be leading us to where we found the chalice. You are right, of course. The next. Okay. John 4, 11. John 4, 11. Here. The well is deep. The next. Uh, quickly. Okay, okay. Uh, Corinthians 4, 5. Here it is. We'll bring to light the hidden things. Any more? Just one. Psalms again. 22, 21. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. The last is confusing. Lions, unicorns, what does it mean? I can't guess. Salient points seem to be a hiding place and a deep well. In no sense is the mausoleum a well, Senor Stobart. Is there a well in the grounds? I do not know. I suppose that there must have been once upon a time. Lopez is the man to ask about anything pertaining to the estate. I'll just have another look around. Very well. Hi, Lopez. Got a minute? Certainly, senor. How can I help you? You must know just about everything that there is to know about this place. See, si, I have lived my whole life here in the service of the Divas Conchelos. Do you know of a well anywhere around here? A well? Si, senor. This used to be a fortified villa. How can you last a siege without water? Great! So where is it? How should I know? The well was covered over in the last century. It was dangerous, you see. And you have no idea where it was? None. It was hidden even before my grandfather's time. Well, you must have a vague idea of where the well is. It must have been in the old house's courtyard, so that would put it around here. Here? Okay. Now, how do we find it? There might be a way. Let me think about it. Any ideas yet? We are looking for a source of water, see? Yes. For generations, the Spanish country folk have had a secret way of locating water, even if it is meters beneath the ground. Ah, you're not talking about water dousing, are you? Eh? You know, you get a stick and walk around until the stick twitches and dig there. Oh, you've heard of it. Yeah, I think most of the planet has. Okay, let's get a stick. Uno momento. It must be a special stick. A Y of hazel. Right. Do you have any hazel trees? See, si. Here. That is hazel. Catch you later, Lopez. Adios, Senor Stobar.
It looked a lot like a hazel tree. I went over to find a suitable stick. Aha! It was a thin, supple twig of hazel. Hi, Lopez. Got a minute? Certainly, senor. How can I help you? Well, I got my divining rod. Now what? Simplicity itself, senor. Hold the wand at the upper ends of the Y. Apply a little tension with your wrists so that the slightest movement of the wand's tip is clear and walk slowly and steadily over the area. Sounds easy enough. <laughs> we'll find this well in no time. Senior Stobart, you've... you've found something. This is it. This is where we find the secret of the Templars. Hidden here for hundreds of years. Lost from the sight of man until now. The mystery is revealed. It's a tin can. I've been walking up and down with a twig in my hands, looking for a tin can. It had water in it. That's what the dowsing stick must have detected. I'd have to check with an archaeologist, but I don't think the Templars left that. In truth, Senor Stobart, the lawn was laid many, many years ago. This can could date back to the Napoleonic Wars. Get rid of it and I'll try it again. Lopez threw the can away. It seemed to fall an awfully long way. The splash at the end confirmed what we both suspected. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. It has been here all the time. All those years and nobody found it. Stood in awe for a moment, marveling at the secrets all around us. I could have fallen down that. The well had been lost for decades at least. The air was cool after the noon sun, but that's not what gave me goosebumps. I have a really, really bad feeling about this. Sometime in antiquity, there'd been a rock slide. Big ones. I wished I'd had a hard hat. I'd need tools to move all that stuff. Heavy equipment that just wasn't available. A great stone lion's head with a gaping maw full of fangs. As far as I knew, nobody had cast eyes upon it for centuries as it stood waiting in the cool shadows, 
The words of the psalm kept running through my head, save me from the lion's mouth. From a distance, the lion's head had been impressive. Close up, it was frightening. Hey, one of the fangs is a separate piece. I could hear the sound of a lot of stone moving, and I knew I was in danger. <laughs> oh, very funny, you psychos! Senior Stobart! Senior Stobart! Are you all right? It's okay, Lopez, I'm fine! Hey, Susto, mia dada! You gave me a scare! Nice try, Templars. In the deep shadows, it was hard to make anything out. I wished that I had Leary's flashlight now. It just felt like a pitted stone wall. I'd almost been killed for the sake of a red herring. I wished that I had Leary's flashlight now. It just felt like a pitted stone wall. I'd almost been killed for the sake of a red herring. Thinking back to how long it had taken the can to fall to the bottom, I stayed as far from the edge as I could. It was a long way down. The brilliant midday sun shone almost directly down the shaft, and I still couldn't see the water. I'd already risked my neck with one death-defying leap in Syria. I wasn't about to push my luck again. I'd need tools to move all that stuff. Heavy equipment that just... I'd need two heavy equipment. Hi, Lopez. There's something I'd like to talk. Certainly, senor. It's really dark down there. Do you have a flashlight or something? No. I broke my torch only last month. Damn. It's so bright up here, but the light's just not getting into the corners. See? The light, it goes in straight lines. Catch you later, Lopez. Adios, Senor Stobar. Thinking back to how long I stayed. It was a long way down. The brilliant midday sun shone almost directly down the shaft, and I still couldn't see the water. I'd already risked my neck with one death-defying leap in Syria. I wasn't about to push my luck again. It was a long... The brilliant... I'd all... I was... It was a long way. The I'd already I wasn't.
There was a bookcase, bureau kind of affair. It was a small mirror hanging over the sink. From the scum in the sink, it looked like he shaved there. There, in the middle of the door, I could see some kind of socket. It looked like this wasn't quite the dead end it seemed. That rock face wasn't nearly as natural as it felt. In the reflected light, I'd seen part of it as worked stone. Open sesame! Another secret door! Before I left, though, there was one last thing to do. You won't be needing that replacement piece anymore, Countess. I found it with the children. You'll probably want to be alone for a while. I'll be out in the garden with Lopez. George, welcome back. Come in, George. It's good to see you again. Is it? Sure. What did you find in Spain? Without Andre, we wouldn't have got this far, George. Yeah, I know. The clues led to an underground chamber at the bottom of a well. The Templars had left a tapestry showing a chessboard. The white pieces were vastly outnumbered. There was a stream running across the board, and a Templar knight on a horse. Does it mean anything to you, André? No, nothing. Maybe we should tell André what else you found, Georges. There's a map and a Latin inscription to the west at the edge of the world. Georges found that in a cave in Syria. Yeah, where the assassin almost killed me. Then we've got the burning of Jacques de Molay and the date, 1314. From the window of the church in Montfaucon Square, one of the few places where nobody tried to kill me. Then we have the image of a church that Georges found at the excavation. I don't recall anyone trying to kill you there either, Georges. And finally we have the tapestry in Spain. Did I mention I almost got killed there? Not yet, but I'm sure you're about to. It was only my cat-like reflexes that saved me from certain death. Cat-like reflexes, eh? And while I was risking life and limb, where were you, Andre? Getting your glasses fogged up over an Etruscan vase? That's enough, boys. Can we get back to saving the world? Of course. My apologies. He started it. Well, uh, the Latin phrase are the words of Julius Caesar. He was describing the island of Britain. Are you sure? The map didn't look much like Britain. How come 
Caesar describe Britain as being at the edge of the world? To the Romans, the Mediterranean was the center of the universe. Britain was a remote, unfriendly place inhabited by blue-painted savages. It hasn't changed much. Well, they've stopped painting themselves blue. Except when they go to a football match. They used an extract from a plant called woad, Isetis tinctoria. The Scots were using it until fairly recently in their wars with the English. Barely recently? I don't recall the Scots being at war with the English. How recently are you talking about? I believe William Wallace's men used it in the 13th century. They might well have been using it as late as... Uh... You can't remember, can you? 1314. Ah, we're back onto that, are we? André, what is it? What do you mean? 1314 in Scotland. The Battle of Bannockburn. That would explain the stream on the chessboard. That's what a burn is. Right, André? As in Bannockburn? Right, George. And it gets better. Tradition has it that the Scots were helped by a shock force of, uh, well, can't you guess? Nuts Templar? Yes, a group of outlawed Templars. They are said to have turned the tide for the Scots. And it all ends at a church in the Isle of Britain at Bannockburn in a church. What are we waiting for? I'll call a cab. I can't go. Andre, you've been loads of help, but... What George is trying to say is that you shouldn't feel guilty. I was? We understand you've got commitments. But listen, we have to hurry. Let's go, George. We'll see it through. Oh, and uh, don't worry about us. It must be done. Oh, oh. I guess so. And we must be nearly there. Somewhere out there in the dark is Scotland. We've come a long way together to get here. Yeah. Let's hope it was worth it. I've still got the clown's nose. So I see. You should throw it away, George. There's something I've been meaning to say to you, Nico. Is this the right time and place, Josh? There might not be another time. I don't want to waste this chance. You don't need to say anything. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. But here, with you, now. You're exhausted. Why don't you get some sleep? Sleep? At a time like this? Excited, huh? Would you like something to help you sleep, dearie? I've got some tablets in my bag. Oh, no. Thank you. Thanks all the same, ma'am. Pardon me. Yes, my dear. Do you know what time we're due in Sterling? A quarter to six, but we're running eight minutes late. Would you believe that this clown's nose led us to being on this train tonight? I would indeed. No, honestly, it... You would? Certainly. You have an honest face. Do you know Sterling well? Yes, I do. Is that where you two lovebirds are bound? Yeah, we... It's one of the places we thought we'd stay on our holiday. Be sure to visit the castle, won't you? Oh, I'm sure it's a neat place. But we are not really interested in history, are we, George? Uh, no. I suppose espresso bars and boogie-woogie are more your cup of tea. That's right. There's nothing George enjoys more than a good boogie. 
Is there a church called St. Ninian's at Sterling? Yes, there is. And I know why you're going there. You do? Of course I do. It's obvious you're in love. You're eloping, and they say romance is dead. What's the book you're reading? Oh, it's something I've picked up at the station. A medieval detective story. Quite well written for that kind of thing. It's been out of print for years. What's the title of the book? The Crooked Crusader Caper by Molly Pegram. I assumed the author was a woman, but apparently not. His real name is... Professor Nigel Pegram. That's right. Do you know him? No, I never met him. George is a great fan of his, though. Yep, that's a nose with a history, all right. So you said. The old lady reminded me of my grandmother, except, of course, that this old lady was still alive. Where are you going, Georges? Do I need to spell it out? Don't snap at me. If you're going to take a leak, why don't you say so? Okay, I'm going to take a leak. L-E-A-K. Tickets, please. Oh, hi. That's a standard full-price peak return. Don't you have a senior citizen's rail card? I rarely travel by train. My ticket is perfectly valid, is it not? Well... Yeah, but you could have saved up to a third of the cost. I do not need to indulge in puffling thriftiness. Blimey, you're a funny old bird and no mistake. Tickets, please, sir. Here. Off to Sterling, eh? Yes, we are. Well, I hope you won't be disappointed. It's a miserable place this time of year. Still, there's plenty of pubs and a lovely view from the castle. Thank you. I don't want to worry you, but there was something familiar about that guy. Are you sure? You're tired. Perhaps you're mistaken. Hmm, maybe. But I didn't like the look in his eyes when he spoke to you. Can't you sit still, George? I need to go to the John. While you're there, check out the buffet car, George. Unthinkable though it is, I am hungry enough to eat English food. Okay. It was the door to the baggage car. It was the door to a sleeping compartment. It was the door to a sleeping... Oh, no. That gangster creep from the hotel. Guido. Well, he didn't scare me. Hey, Buster. This is a no-smoking car. Okay, maybe he did scare me. It got worse. I suddenly realized who the conductor had reminded me of. Eklund, Marquet's murderer. I should have known better than to leave Nico and the old lady alone. Suddenly, the sword of Baphomet took second place to finding the girl I loved.
The man's face was blotched and unshaven. I guess he'd been traveling all night. Red-rimmed eyes stared fish-like above his broken nose. Hi, having a party? No, this is Brutus. Come on, join us, man. We're Basha, wake up, man. What's company? His breath was like the outlet from a chemical factory. Excuse me, mate, he's talking a nap. Sleeping like a bobby. I'd wake him up when we get to Newcastle. We passed through Newcastle half an hour ago. And I never noticed. What is that stuff you're drinking? It smells like gasoline. Aye, I'll put hairs in your chest, like. And your eyeballs, too, by the looks of you. Did you see what happened to the young woman in the next compartment? No, Paula, didn't have you lost her, like? She's disappeared. The old lady, too. I think they're in trouble. Oh, we yeah, man, an old lady, too. Yeah, you gotta help me. Maybe they went to the toilet, like? I don't think so. You never go on our own. I was in pairs, you know? No, she's been abducted, I'm sure. I've got to go look for her. What's stopping you, pal? The conductor. He's not what he seems. You want to avoid him, like? That's about it, yeah. No problem. Listen, I need your help. What's the matter? There's a guy on this train who's trying to kill me. Relax, man. You wouldn't try nothing with us in Basharia. We are veterans, like. So action at Breitling Sea. I don't recall the British Army being involved in a conflict at anywhere called Breitling Sea. Well, you just take it from me, pal. You're in safe hands. Would you like a red nose? No, thanks, pal. I got one of my own. See you later. Don't do it, pal. Don't jump. I don't intend to jump. I'm going to climb on top of the train. You're kidding, aren't you? Just watch me. Hold on now, pal. I'll give you a hand, like. was my chance. You saved our lives, but why? We were always on the same side, Stobart. Different causes, but a common enemy. The Knights Templar? Don't call them that. The real Templars were a noble foe. These... Uh, Barbarians have no right to that name. These men are no better than dogs. What are the Neo-Templars after? What is the sword of Baphomet? Not what you think, my friend. It is a weapon, yes, but one which our enemies will find difficult to wield. A double-edged sword, a power older than Timolé, Older than Solomon. We'll stop them. You and me together. And Nico. No, George. My journey ends soon at the Garden of Paradise. You're talking in riddles. Can't you tell me straight what they're after? The sword symbolizes a colossal energy caused by the alignment of the Earth's natural power fields. Which are focused at St. Ninian's. The energy endowed the Templars with the power which made them great. A power which made them charismatic to such an extent they could control the will of all around them. Hmm. 
Maybe not. How did you escape from the bull's head? It is a long walk from the cliff of the bull to the village, Stobart. Fortunately, I know the ways of the wilderness. Also, I have a sister who keeps a garage just around the corner. May Allah guide you to our enemies. Thanks. One last thing. What? What is it? He's dead. The head of the axe glinted invitingly. I could hack Eklund into tiny pieces and feed him to the wolves. Don't even think about it, George. What? Who? Look me straight in the eye and tell me you weren't thinking of using that axe on Eklund. Don't be foolish, woman. I was going to use it on you. The guy was a professional killer. The last thing he deserved was sympathy. I had to admit it, though. I was sorry he'd ended up this way. It was a fire extinguisher. I couldn't think of a single way the extinguisher would be of use in the absence of a fire. Nico looked good, even in ropes. Nico looked good. Nico looked good. Don't even think about it. What? Who? Look. Don't be foolish, woman. I was going to use it on you. Where do you think you're going? Don't worry. I hadn't forgotten about you. And tell me this instant, George Stobart. I will. When I'm ready. Oh, that's not fair, George. No. You took advantage while my hands were tied. When Eklund pointed that gun at me, I thought I was going to die. I thought of all the things I'd never get to do. And kissing you was at the top of my list. George? Uh-huh? George, we've got to get off the train. Eklund could recover at any time. So what are we waiting for? Nico? What now? How are you feeling? How would you feel if you'd been tied up and humiliated? Don't worry. Eklund isn't going to cause any problems for a little while. I wasn't talking about Eklund. Oh, now listen. I don't want to talk about it. You took advantage of me, George Stobart. Are you mad at me because of one little kiss? Little? You have a tongue like an horse. You're such a sweet talker, Nico. Well, what do you think about... George! We don't have time for that. Don't even... What? Who? Look me straight in the eye. Oh, come on. You think I'd kill a man in cold blood? Of course not. I just don't trust you not to cut your own stupid foot off. What are you doing? I'm out of here. Not that dog. Do you want to end up like Flap? Not especially. What remains of him is well on his way back to London. I hope he was traveling on a return ticket. I'd feel happier if we had a gun or something. Khan gave me something. What? His handbag. Oh, great. If we run into any killers, we can give him a good buffeting. Didn't he have any weapons? You don't know the half of it. This bag's full of C4. Wow. Why didn't you say so? Boy, we'll show him now. What's C4? 
plastic, Josh. We're going to shop our way to victory? Two kilos of plastic explosive. The detonator's broken, though. No problem. We'll buy a box of matches somewhere. It doesn't work that way. It takes a small explosion to start the big explosion. Well, that's not much use, then. What does that sign say? Apparently, during the English Civil War in the mid-17th century, this place was used as an arms dump. Yeah? What happened? Look at the state of this place, Josh. You work it out. Oh, stray spark? You got it. The tower was the only thing to survive the blast. I hope the explosion didn't destroy the Sword of Baphomet. Do you? I rather hope it did. I scrabbled around in the rubble and found an old clay pipe with a broken stem. Under one of the stones, I found a metal coin which was green with age. It was caked with soil, but what I'd found was a small cog and spindle. It was a heap of stones and stuff which had tumbled down from the rafters. With mounting excitement, I felt something between my fingers. It was short, hard, and black. Something I hadn't expected to find here. It was a plastic pen top. I didn't find anything. The wheel had a serrated edge which meshed with the turning cog. Marks on the spindle behind the wheel suggested it once had a rope attached to it. The wheel turned reluctantly with a creak of complaint. There was no obvious way of removing the wheel from its housing. The handle turned easily and the larger wheel began to revolve. Damn! Then the handle came off in my hand. Now that the handle was gone, it was easy to remove the cog and spindle. The wheel turned There was no obvious... She was as beautiful as ever, but the shadows beneath her eyes marked the strain of the last few days. The stone face of the demon grinned with a horribly lifelike expression. It was so realistic, I could imagine the sculptor carving it from a live model. Nico? Uh-huh. What are you doing? Committing this inscription to memory. Can you read it? No. What's the point of studying the inscription if you can't read it? Because it could be important. A clue to whatever we're looking for, who knows? I might find someone in Stalin to translate it. We don't have time to go looking for a linguist. No, at least I am doing something positive. Look, I found an old coin. You think it's worth anything? George, focus on the situation at hand, please. What language is that inscription written in? You're the language student, you tell me. It looks like ancient Norse. Maybe. Perhaps it's in code. I don't think so. Norse code. Any suggestions what I could do with this cog? Well... Any suggestions? What? Well. Any? Well. Hmm. Look what I found buried in the rubble. It's a plastic pen top. Yeah. Amazing, isn't it? Astounding. Nico, I found an old clay pipe. Josh, I don't care. I pushed the pen top into the mouth 
and it disappeared somewhere inside the statue. It had probably gone straight to Biro Hell. With the clay pipe in his mouth, he looked happy, homely, like somebody's granddaddy. What do you think you're doing, Josh? I wondered if there was a secret mechanism in the demon's mouth. Maybe you should show a little more respect. For a mythical medieval demon? Give me a break. Okay. Go right ahead. Meddle with forces you don't understand. Incur the demon's wrath and burn in hell. Just see if I care. Sometimes the most childish gestures can have a cathartic effect. The transformation of the demon to a clown did just that for me. The cog slipped neatly into the eye socket. With a rasp of metal on stone, I eased the second eye into place. I pushed the handle into the demon's mouth. The cogs all meshed. I began to turn. Nico? Uh-huh. Look! Josh! With the clay pipe in his... As soon as I saw the flickering torches, I realized the bogus Templars had beaten us to the sword. But where were they now? And why was it so quiet? The powder spilling from the barrels reminded me of pirate stories I'd loved when I was a kid. It was gunpowder. It was definitely gunpowder, but it had solidified over the centuries it had lain here undisturbed. Nico? Uh-huh? It looks like the Templars got here first. We might not be too late. There's still a chance. I wish I had your optimism. So do I, Josh. Sometimes you're so negative. Listen, I can definitely hear chanting. You're right. I hear it too. What do you suppose they're doing? It wouldn't surprise me if they were holding some kind of satanic sex ritual. So, what are we waiting for? Shh! Will you look at that? Baphomet. Labino was right. This place was ancient even to the Templars. This whole place? This is Baphomet? Finally, the truth. The Templars had never worshipped this graven image. No more than they'd worship a rainbow. But, like a rainbow, they regarded it as a symbol of a covenant with God who'd revealed this place to them. Rosso! Why the double dealing treacherous? On the contrary. Inspector Rosso has been the model of obedience. An important quality in a true Templar. Now be quiet and watch if you wish to live much longer. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here to witness the reforging of the sword that was broken. Here before God's sentinel, Baphomet. Grand 
master and knight of Baphomet. We salute and pledge our obedience to you. I salute you, gatekeeper of the temple. Seven centuries ago, our greatest weapon, the sword of Baphomet, was lost to us. Now we prepare to reforge it, to wield against new enemies. As the tired millennium dies, and this world looks for new leaders, we shall not fail. We shall lead the people to a new order, wherein all borders will dissolve. All will be united under the Red Cross of the Templars. have watched your efforts to stop us with respect. But surely you realize that you have been misled by our enemies. Both of us want a better world. Fortunately, no harm has been done. We need determined, resourceful men like Join us, George. Join us in true brotherhood. Yeah, true. Wait, brothers? What about Marquet? What about Pegram and Klausner? You didn't look on them as brothers, only as failures. Three men dead, and you don't give a damn. George. You know that sacrifices are necessary. Every great undertaking. Join you. I'll see you in hell first. Ah, oh, George. I had great hopes for you. C'est la guerre. Eklund. Kill him. If it isn't the great detective and his beautiful assistant, it's going to be a pleasure killing the pair of you. Josh, what are we going to do? Come on, Nico, we're leaving. You fools! You can't. 
cannot escape us. Dido! Stop that. But master, the powder. That powder is from the English Civil War. You. Ooh. It's over 300 years old. I thought it was all over, but Nico had one last trick up her sleeve. Or in her handbag, to be exact. A handbag full of plastic explosives. Maybe, but this stuff is brand new. Oh. You know, you'll never be able to write your story now. I don't care. I've got what I want. Huh? Just tell me one thing, Georges. Is our life together always going to be this crazy? <laughs>